Hey, what's going on? It's Bill Burr, and it's time for the Thursday afternoon just before Friday, Monday morning podcast, and I am just checking in on you, just checking in to see how the hell you're doing on this wonderful Friday that also happens to be St. Patrick's Day. Oh, the legend, the legend of St. Patrick. I'm looking it up right now. What happened? Did he chase the rats out of fucking town so everybody could go back to boozing in peace? What happened? The legend of St. Patrick. There are many legends associated with the life of St. Patrick. According to one, he miraculously drove all the snakes of Ireland into the sea. He is said to have used the three leaflets of the shamrock to explain the concept of the Holy Trinity. The Holy Trinity, is that garlic, onions, and something else in New Orleans? He reportedly raised as many as 33 people from the dead. Oh, this he's like Irish Jesus. Except typical Irish guy. He didn't do it for himself like Jesus did, the selfish hippie. He did it for other people. He did it for other people. And then they were like, Patty, Saint, say, Patty, you all right? And he's just like, yeah, I'm good. Well, don't you want to fucking live forever? No, no, I'm fine. No, I'm fine, laddie. You just go on and you fucking... Whatever the fuck you want to do. Um, anyway, happy St. Patrick's Day to everybody. Uh, if you're smart. Oh, shit. My kid's taking a nap. Sorry. If you're smart, um, you know, and you're of a certain age, you'll stay out of the bars. I mean, this is just a shit show. People just, they, they should be, you know, you go to a bowling alley, they give you bowling shoes. Like, this is the day they should just, you should come in check your shoes, and you get a pair of shoes to puke in, right? The old puking loafers. There's a number on the back. Every number says zero. (laughs) Um, Yeah, I'm not going to lie to you. I used to go out on St. Patrick's Day, and uh, but I didn't, not very long. By my late 20s, I was just like, all right, this is fucking stupid. You know, this is the Valentine. This is Valentine's Day for alcoholics, where every you can't get a fucking seat. Everything's booked up. There's a line everywhere. It's a big fucking pain in the ass. Everybody's dressed like an asshole. It's the exact same thing. Um, why don't I go out boozing on the 18th when I can get a seat when everybody's hungover? Same thing, right? Celebrate your relationship on February 15th or 16th. Although I think the restaurants are starting to get a little wise to it but they can't really justify it yet. I think eventually they're going to move it to Valentine's Week, spelt W-E-A-K. But fortunately, you know, most of the women that I've been talking to, they're all like, yeah, I think it's fucking stupid. Um, Let's check this out here. Wait, does that mean there's no snakes in fucking Ireland? Are there? Well, since St. Patty left, they all came back. Are there any snakes... In Ireland. Well, that's a nice setup for a joke. Yeah, talk to my neighbor. All right, Ireland is one of many countries where there are no snakes. Wow, they must be fascinated by those fucking things. There's snakes in my country, and I fucking, I'm freaked out by them. You just can't tell where they're going. You know what I mean? They got too many moves. You just got to stare at the head. You know, you're the running back. You just, you know, you just look at the hips, aim for that shit. Don't, don't go for the head movement. The snake's the exact opposite. Right? Fucking sidewinder looking at you. He's going to the side. Um, they got to have something called a snake killer, right? Big goddamn pole with a fucking meat cleaver on it. Um, no snakes in Ireland. Isn't that amazing? I guess they can't swim, huh? They must have missed the boat. Because according to, uh, you know, these fucking people here, whatever you call them, the people that actually study, like, land. What do you call those people? Landscapers? <laughs> horticulturists? No, smarter than a landscaper. Smarter than a horticulturist. Smarter than a paleontologist. They, they, they like, hang with paleontologists. Like, they give each other a, a little tip of the cap, and I think they look down on horticulturists, botanists, landscapers. Like, landscapers are the cigarette smokers of people that work with the land, you know? Despite, I feel, their work is displayed 
more often than anybody else's. You know what I mean? But then I think that kind of means you're more like that Andy Warhol guy, who I have to tell you, it's just, I, I don't get that shit at all. It's a soup can. I'm commenting on the fucking capitalism. Oh, that's fantastic, Andy. That's amazing. Um, you got anything else? Would you, would you paint a coat hanger with we love our customers on it? Um, painfully. I'm going to look at I went after Ginger Bank. I'm, I'm fucking, I'm trying to get controversial here, man. I'm trying to get more listeners. All right. I went after dead fucking Ginger Baker. A couple weeks ago, now I'm going after dead Andy Warhol. I will tell you the one thing I do feel for Andy Warhol is some psycho chick shot him and really went to jail for like fucking, you know, a year or so, and that was it. And then years later, he died from complications from those gunshots. Um, Although, I don't know, you talk to so many people that hung out with him, he said he he was a bit of a toxic cunt, but that doesn't mean that some, what was it? She called it the scum manifesto. That's what it was. You know what I mean? This is back when, they, you know, if they just had social media back then, she could have just tried to cancel them through, like, you know, Twitter or something. But back then, you know, if you were an angry white woman, you had to take the matters into your own hands. And even then, you still got treated like a white chick. <laughs> I know what a lot of you white broads are thinking. Bill, you got a lot of nerve as a white male saying this shit. It's like, well, I'm just trying to get you guys to, to sit down at your seat at the same table. There's something that's been bugging me throughout this whole fucking air quote movement. The way fucking white women have been doing, you know, not, not all white women. I'm not saying all, but the, the fucking loudmouth ones who keep trying to, if I see one more white woman talking about what a fucking victim she is, I'm really only talking about one in particular. Um, anyway, um, uh, what am I doing here? Snakes in Ireland. St. Patrick's Day. Uh, this is going to be yet another podcast slider. I am in the middle of uh, an acting gig here. Uh, I will be halfway done with it later on this week. So I don't have a lot of time to uh, pay attention to what's going on in the world, which is why I'm bringing up people that died years ago and saying that they're not good. Who, who, what other dead person are you going to go after, Bill? You already went after Jesus, too. You called him a hippie. It's not like there was a barbershop on every corner back then. You know? I don't think he was a hippie. I don't think hippies walking around and let other people wash their feet. Although I think that that was a a really, like, you know, I think it was a way to show respect back in the day. It can't be. I don't think there could ever be a time that 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 was. You know? I love all of that shit, though. Remember that time those, you know, that guy in the Middle East threw his shoes at fucking George W. Bush. You know, and the way he ducked and got out of the way, you knew he had no business being president. You know what I mean? Because he fucking ducked those things like a champ. Politicians are stiff as a fucking board. His fucking eyes lit up like Mike Singletary when he saw that guy stand up, and he fucking ducked twice. You know, it was funny is then they dragged the guy out, and he, and he didn't have his shoes either. Um, I want to know why that's such a fucking insult. That is, that is one of the, you know, there's the white glove across the face. Um, different cultures. Wait, wait. Throwing shoes, sign of offense. Throwing shoes, insult. All right. Shoe throwing or sh- or shoeing. Shoeing the soles of one's shoe or use shoes to insult are forms of protest in many parts of the world. Oh, shoe throwing as an insult dates back to ancient time. Times being mentioned in the verse 8 of Psalm 60. And the similar verse of 9 of Psalm 108 in the Old Testament. Well, can you give me a fucking quote? List of shoe-throwing incidents. All right, here we go. I mean, I got to go Mike Milbury. Mike Milbury fucking U.S. President George W. Bush ducking a shoe while Iraq Prime Minister Nori Al-Maki attempts to catch it. Wait, if he catches it, does that mean you're out? 
Is it like dodgeball? Do you not get to fucking be offended again? Uh, shoe, shoe throwing or shoeing. Da, 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 the psalm, all that shit. Modern incidents where shoes were thrown at political figures have taken place in Australia. Ah, oh, look at that. Australia. Looks like you have a bunch of cunts down there too. India. Ireland. Taiwan, Hong Kong, Pakistan, the United Kingdom, the United States, and most notably, the Arab world. Protesters of George W. Bush's face have long appeared through the Middle East with shoes attached to them. And some people have called former Secretary of State Condoleezza Rice uh, Kundera, a Kundera, I guess, Lisa Rice, meaning shoe. Shoeing received attention after, uh, I can't say these, Montadhar al Zaidi threw his shoes at then U.S. President George W. Bush in a 14th of December 2008 press conference in Baghdad. I don't know how the fuck these politicians do that shit. Just be the mouthpiece for these corporations. And then everybody fucking blames you and not the fucking corporations. And you walking around just being like, do you know there's an entire country that wants to throw their shoes at me because of what they think I wanted to do? Uh, Well, it's good to know we still arrived. How about a shout out for Matandahar al Zaidi? You know, you got to do that. I mean, you got to, I mean, at some point, what are you going to do? You just sit there and let these fucking assholes come into your country? You got to, you got to say something, right? I'm just trying to fill, you know, by the way, I'm not trying to be anti-American here. I'm just trying to follow the narrative that we now have. Now we are against more powerful countries invading weaker countries. (laughs) So I'm just trying to, trying to toe the line, man. You know me, government told me to wear a mask. I wore a mask and now they're telling me that I, I, I shouldn't be, you know, supporting Russia going in uh, a more powerful country going into, uh, you know, the fucking Ukraine. So now, now we, it's just 1984. So now we fucking, we, we go all the way back. We change everything. Am I doing it right? Am I doing the math right? I have fucking no idea. I have no idea what's going on in the world. Um, which is why I'm talking about some guy who threw his shoes at George Bush. I remember being really disappointed that he missed him. You know what I mean? I mean, I always root for the president. You know, I got to tell you something. Speaking of that, uh, I really missed sideways at the podium, Donald Trump. You know, I really fucking miss. I don't miss anything else about that guy. Um, Other than the bizarre following that he has where people actually think he's a smart guy. When it's right there for everyone to see that the guy couldn't even keep a fucking casino going. In a casino town, he takes advantage of bankruptcy laws and fucks over the working man. Like, fuck you, I'm bigger than you, sue me. Any chance he gets, you know? And then how does he act? How do his followers act when they find that out? The working class people that so love that guy, they act like Houston Astro fans. Everybody steals sides, right? Ah, he fucked over the working Hey, They all do it. Wait a minute. I did that as a Patriots fan. All right. I'm a hypocrite. Um, But I don't do the politics. Makes me better. Yeah. Uh, March Madness has arrived, ladies and gentlemen. And it's time for you to take your hard-earned money that you saved up to send your kid to college and blow it on Marquette. Uh, Let's see. When is March Madness? Does Marquette even in it? Uh, March Madness. Schedule. Dun 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 dun. What a da 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 da. Oh my God! The madness has already begun. Memphis, number nine. Memphis got a sizable lead over Boise State. Norfolk State getting the pounding you knew was happening from Baylor. When did Baylor become a powerhouse in basketball? Well, they're playing Norfolk State. Is that like Norfolk County in Massachusetts? Tennessee, Tennessee, I watched one of their games this year. Had somebody on that team that could throw it down. There's a lot of teams this year that are in it I never even heard of. Marquette is playing. They're playing UNC. Today at 1.30, I'm going to watch that. 
I'm going to watch some of the March Madness. Anyway, you know what? Why don't I just talk about the only thing that I do have to talk about, which is being um, on this acting gig. And it's, uh, man, we did some great shit this week. I'm not even going to lie to you. It's been every fucking day has been, you know, the actors on this thing have been crushing it. So all I'm thinking is, you know, because I'm walking around the set going like, this is going to be a fucking great movie. Am I crazy? Yeah, but all these people have been in the business, so they're going like, yeah, but I see their face like, you know, you never know how it comes together. So that's the only thing making me nervous. But I think, uh, you know, I think we got some fucking great shit. And um, I'm kind of getting excited because I've been looking at the dailies. Fuck that. I've been looking at the dailies. I know they look great. All right, I'm not going to lie to you guys. I don't know what the hell I'm doing, but what I'm doing, I think it's looking good. <laughs> um and to update you on my food poisoning i'm still i don't know i'm still having uh some issues if you know what i mean um i don't know i i can't stay fucking hydrated i'm drinking the bubbly shit i'm drinking the Lacroix. i have a fucking water every time i have any liquid i feel like you know I, i gotta stay like you know fucking bent over for half a second like because my stomach deals with it so i got so sick of eating like fucking plain white rice and crackers and uh which by the way if you know you can't call the redskins the redskins anymore which i totally understand and can't believe it went as long as it did um why are we still allowed to call crackers crackers Huh? I mean, that's ridiculous. I want to know where the progressive movement, what is the narrative on crackers? Um, anyway, I, I, once again, I just woke up this morning and I was just like, you got to be kidding me. Like, when is this going to be over? All right. I don't want to gross you guys out, but like I said, okay, I, I am now a firm believer that the human Human beings are 90% water. You know, and I always wanted to, you know, when people like, you know, f- jump off something and they hit the ground and they just fucking splat. Uh, you know, you view yourself as you're like solid. You're not. You're like a fucking water balloon. All right, Bill. What else you want to talk about? I'll tell you what I want to talk about. I want to talk helicopters and how much I miss flying them. You know, I'm not allowed to fly when I'm doing this stuff. So all I've been able to do is I just, uh, you know, I, I run her up, you know, once a week, let her go for 15 minutes, you know, just so I can get the fluids going through. It's never good for an engine to be sitting there or anything like that. And I got a buddy of mine that uh, flies it once a week, which is all it needs. But uh, there's just like this time of the year is the best fucking time of the year to fly when it's, it's starting to get hot already, but when it's like still cool out and you get a few of those days where it's like, it was windy or something like that the day before and it blows all the haze out and all of that shit. Um, and you get up there and it's just, it's just one of the most beautiful cities. I mean, what the fuck do I know? It's the only city I ever flew over, but I'm telling you, yeah, I'm gonna tell you right now, if you ever want to take a fucking helicopter ride, you got to do it in LA. If you're into real estate, I mean, it's just some. it's just one sick ass home after another right next to a sit another sick ass home with no fucking yard whatsoever but there's like a big thing when you have money that you want to have a view you know what i mean because not only do you get the breathtaking view which is amazing you also get to look down on all of these people that you're beating you know i got more money than you i got more money than you i got more money from those fucking skyscrapers all the way out to the fucking ocean, you know? And you stand out there on your astroturf grass right in front of your infinity pool, open robe, just surveying what you've done. (laughs) All right, now that I've made fun of that, that would be fun to do it. Even if you did it mockingly, it's just fun. Um... Anyway, well, I will tell you this. I I do know this about food poisoning. Food poisoning, it's like bulimia and anorexia without the guilt. 
you know, because you drop the weight. You really can't eat whatever you want and you won't put on any weight. <laughs> it's just fucking, fucking brutal. Um, so anyway, I, I was not going to do shit today, uh, but I, I do. I got to learn some fucking lines um, for Saturday, which I feel is, uh, I feel like I got like all like, you know, when you do these things, right? All the great actors, I feel they just keep reading the script and reading the script and reading the script, which is great because you know your moments before and then also you can, you can build an arc for your character, you know, somewhere to go with it. So you're not like peaking too early in the movie. Um, and uh, and the other thing is, is there's always like two or three scenes where you're like, all right, I got to fucking nail that. I really need to fucking nail that. And then I can feel like I got like, it's like watching a football game and your team's up by seven. You'd be like, yeah, but if we're, if we're up by like, we get another touchdown and a field goal, I can start feeling like we're going to win this game. Um, that's what Saturday is for me. When I get past that, I've done all, you know, these bigger things as far as like, emotional shit I have to go through and then we have but then next week we have like a really complex thing to shoot but that's a that's more of a director thing but the big acting thing is is tomorrow I'm sorry Saturday so I gotta fucking get ready to do that I gotta tell you I'm actually having a great time all right but I do have to do stand-up either tonight or tomorrow because I gotta be honest with you I can't remember one joke in my act and I immediately have to do a fucking you know tour once this thing wraps but I know what I'm gonna do I'm just gonna fucking I have like a week before I go out, right? And I'm just going to get on stage and uh, just run it, run it, run it. I only need to do it three times. I do it three times. I'll have the fucking thing up and running and um, I'll get it going again. I've been doing this shit 30 years, so I, I can get it going. But uh, I'm very excited for that. And I got some fun gigs coming up. Um, I'll tell you, you know, if I didn't have to take a fucking shit every fucking three seconds, I, my life is, is pretty much perfect. And isn't that the balance, people? That is the balance. You know what I mean? If you're going to win the lottery, you know, you're going to get fucking food poisoning after the, the crustaceans you eat that night celebrating or something. Something's going to just, like, balance it out. You know, I, I sense the stupid... There was this fucking thing I was watching... Is there anything funnier than watching a narcissist give fucking life advice on fucking Instagram? It's just fucking, these fucking idiots. It's, it's, the only thing funnier than that is the comments underneath with all these idiots are just going like, truth, you know, uh, you know, that's how I approach it. It really is, you know, I should probably look at it more empathetic where you just sit there and you look at how, uh, I don't know, just how empty and sad, you know, so much of life is, is you're trying to find some sort of meaning and purpose in it um, beyond how great it is on an afternoon to sit down and have a sandwich, be able to have a sandwich and hang out with a friend. Because I mean, anything beyond that, anything fucking beyond that is just like, it's, it's this, right? Is it? The, wait a minute. Am I giving you life advice? Oh, fuck. The guy who does a podcast with no, go, with no guests. Um, did I just say no ghosts? That was kind of weird. Somebody told me a ghost story yesterday, and I was just like, you know. I don't know. I, my thing with ghosts is I don't fucking believe in them. That has got to be the most profound profoundly not deep thing I've ever said in my life. Just the way I paused before I said in the middle of that. My whole thing's with, with ghosts. Yeah. Yeah, what do you think? I don't believe in them. I just don't, I don't understand the power that they have. All right, you scare me, and then what? At the end of the day, I'm alive, and you're dead, and you're the one who's upset. All right? Do you want to talk about it? Casper, whatever your fucking deal is. I want to talk to people that have like haunted houses and I just say to them, 
why don't you fucking quit rolling over and showing your belly and trying to make the spirit, you know, come to rest? Why don't you just fucking talk to the ghost the way you would to any other asshole that barged in when you were sleeping? I think that's the major problem with ghost hunters is the level of respect that they have for these ghosts like they achieve something. All right? They obviously did something in their life, you know, where God didn't want them and the devil didn't want them, right? I mean, I just think that these are some of the most legendary cunts in the history of, of humanity. Because if God doesn't want you, the devil takes you, right? For the devil to also be like, yeah, no, nah, I don't see that vibe fitting in down here, right? <laughs> In the basement apartment. So then you're just doomed to fucking walk around a townhouse waiting for the sun to to go down or hoping somebody takes a fucking afternoon nap. I don't know. It's rather silly. Um, But whenever somebody tells me a ghost story, they fucking believe it. They believe it. I don't know. People walking through things, walking through walls looking at him or lifting him up in a, in a fucking bed. I don't know, man. I, I just like, it creeps me out. It's weird. I got this weird thing where I, I don't want to watch horror movies because I, I 100% take the ride. They scare the shit out of me. Every single one of them, you know, unless it's just an over the top slasher one. And then I'm just sort of bored. But like, uh, like all those saw movies, it's just so bizarre to me that people want to go sit there and like, like you know, you got all these fucking people like, oh, this movie, the objectification of fucking women and blah, 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 and all that shit. Like that guy, you know, when he was saying he was trying to watch that episode of Ballers on my last podcast, right? His girlfriend got upset because she thought it objectified women and that's why he was watching it and stuff. But like if he put on Saw, you know, and there's somebody chained to the floor and what was the whole thing with that? You got to saw your limb off. Where was Saw's the limb off first gets to get out of there or some dumb shit? Um, that's got to be the number one reason to never wear a belt. Is if you're ever in a situation, it's like, well, you know, I would saw my limb off, but I can't stop the bleeding with the belt. So, you know, if I was in that room, he saw your hand, he saw your hand. All right. And I'd be like, all right, I remember biology. Where's the nearest artery? Oh, right there. I just fucking, yeah, just bleed out right there. Uh, sorry, buddy. Looks like you're going to have to go back to the Dairy Queen parking lot and try to get another victim. Because this guy just said, I'm not playing. <laughs> I would love to fucking reboot that fucking thing myself and just say, you know, when that guy comes on the fucking drive through speaker and just is just like, if you want to get out of here, you need to pick up that hacksaw. And you either saw off your foot or you saw off your hand. And I just have the person just be like, or else what? <laughs> What are you going to do? What are you, you going to kill me? Good. Then I don't have to saw my fucking foot off or my hand off. I'm not going to fucking. I'm not sawing my fucking foot off. And then hobbling around for the rest of my life. And What happened to your foot? Oh, I sawed it off. Why? Because I was getting a soft serve at a Dairy Queen. And uh, somebody came up with the, one of the, with the, you know, the club, remember those things from the 1990s that they just broke your steering wheel and took your car anyway? Yeah, he hit me over the head with it and then chained me to a floor. Saw your foot off. Go, f- I need it. All right? This is like something on, this is not sold separately. All right? I either fucking leave with all of this shit or I'm dying. That's it. All right? You fucking weirdo. What happened to you when you were a kid? Huh? Your dad beat you with landscaping equipment? Um, sorry. Um, all right, let's get to the... Uh, let's get to the... Um, 
what is it? Oh, the, the, the advertising here. I was trying to think of how to beat Jason. Jason. The great thing about Jason is, like, he scared the shit out of you, but it was over quick. You know? And also, in my heart of hearts, I mean, I love anyone who's a hockey fan. I'm oh, sorry. All right. Zip recruiter, everybody. According, zip. Oh, I can't yell. My kid's sleeping. Sorry. According to the latest research, 90% of employers plan to make enhancing the employee experience experience a top priority in 2022. After all, a happy workplace is key to attracting and keeping great employees. And if you need to add more employees to your, to your team, there's ZipRecruiter. Their matching technology helps you find the right people for your roles fast. And right now, you can try ZipRecruiter for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash Burr. ZipRecruiter uses its powerful technology to find and match the right candidates up with your job. Then it proactively presents these candidates to you. Uh, you can easily review these recommended candidates and invite your top choices to apply to your job, with, uh, which encourages them to apply faster. No wonder Zip <laughs> is the number one rated hiring site in the U.S. based on G2 rating. Zip excuse me. Technology is so effective that four to five employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality, usually get a, get a quality candidate within the first day. Okay, so if you have some critical thing, uh, position you need to fill and you want to get the right person, you, go, you get off your goddamn ass and then sit back down again, especially if you're fronting your laptop, you know, and, and go to ZipRecruiter.com. Try it out for free at this exclusive website, ZipRecruiter.com slash Burr. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash Burr, B-U-R-R, Zip. Recruiter, the smartest way to hire. All right, people. That is the Thursday afternoon, just before Friday, Monday morning podcast. Enjoy the music and a bonus episode of the Thursday afternoon, just before Friday, Monday morning podcast. And I will talk to you guys on Monday. Hey, what's going on? It's Bill Burr, and it's the Monday morning podcast for Monday, March 17th, 2014, St. Patrick's Day, falling on a Monday. We're really going to see who the fucking real drinkers are this you know, when it falls on Monday. Either way, whatever. I'm still touring Canada with the wonderful Paul Verzi, who is uh, once again a special guest here on the podcast. Welcome, Paul Verzi. Uh, what's up, man? How you hanging in there? I'm doing well, you know? What do we got left? How many more days? I, I told you. I put the blinders on. Didn't think about getting home. You can't. And uh, yeah. we got, uh, what do we got? We got tonight. We got, yeah, dude, it's, we're, we're three days away from yeah. being home. We got one tonight in Vancouver. Yeah. Then we're in uh, Victoria. Victoria. Then we go back to Calgary. Back to those animals. Animals. Fucking animals, animals in Calgary. Calgary. Jesus. Not the first show. The second show. Wow. My wow. God. I'm trying to say, uh, yeah, we wanted to reach out to people in Calgary before we we just brand everybody in Calgary animals. Like, they, they were fucking pounding. You know what? That first show was great. They, yeah, they were great. That second show, though. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, they they were like uh, they were coming in with cases of tall boys. They were allowed to bring those little those little cardboard pallets, hammered, hammered, fucking hammered. Just and then down. then they had like uh, I, you know one, I think part of it had to do with the fact that it was at a college. So I think there was college kids there. I just put myself in that mindset, going, dude, I drank like that when I was in college. This isn't. How? I don't know though, dude. That wasn't all college people because I asked the crowd, and like that—that that, that was just—I think that was a lot of just Calgary, man. I think that was, was late night, you know. Yeah, I think what was around. permitted on the premises turned them into fucking animals. <laughs> yeah, you know. They, they, you know, by the time I went on stage, when I got halfway through my set, it was most of them had kind of like passed out. Like it got was getting quiet, <laughs> and I was standing up there. <laughs> Going like, am I bombing up here? And I just was looking at like five different people who were laughing their ass off. And I'm like, I'm just going to say in my head, they're sober. Yeah. Like there's no way if I'm really bombing, I got somebody laughing that hard. So I was just like, maybe this show has gone on too long. I, like, I'll tell you, that was a rough one, you know? Oh, those animals in Calgary. What was I at the zoo? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Still fun. So then, we, then we, we're driving out. And me and Verzi, we're trying to find a place to smoke a stogie inside right oh, or great. they had this that they had on that campus which was really uh, exciting to me was in, they had the speed skating loop 
from the 1988 Olympics, and they still had ice on it. We were trying to get on that fucker. Yeah. Oh, dude, that would have been a great YouTube video if they loaned us some speed skates. Uh, going out there in a stand-up comedy clothes with those giant blades on it. I just want to be going fast enough. I want to be going fast enough where I'm turned so to the side I can put those three fingers down, you know, when you go around the corner. Oh, my God, yeah. No, I would never. I would have been on YouTube for the wrong reasons. Oh, I yeah. Both of us would have. I would have oh. wiped out, and I would have, you know, when they wipe out, when the centrifugal force just takes you into the stands? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That would have been yeah. me. That would have been me. So, anyways, we're trying to do that. Uh, we ended up finding this great place to smoke a cigar, so we're driving out. And we're trying to figure out, going, dude, was, uh, you know, we're talking about the show, going like, dude, was it me? Or that, that first show was good, but that second show, wow. Um, did you feel the same way? And we're, you know, basically exchanging notes. And as we drive out of the venue, uh, we see this group of fucking hammered people. And this guy, he's got, you know, those things like when they have a parade go down the street, those giant, like, metal. Um, the barricades. The barricades. Yeah. Like those metal ones that have, yeah. like, it looks like a fucking, I don't know. Whatever, giant metal barricade. This fucking guy picks it up with one hand, and he's got it over his shoulder, turns around, sees us coming, and then waves us through like he's some sort of official per For half a second, the way he did it, I <laughs> thought he was. And then as I drove by, I'm looking at him, and I see he's, sam he's hammered, and then I see on his face it registers that we're the two comics he just saw. So... Um, I just pull away from him, and as I'm driving, and you're going like, wow, man, that guy just had was carrying that thing with one hand. What the fuck? I turn around and look in the rearview mirror, and this guy's running after the, the car. We're doing probably like, what, 15 miles an hour? Yeah. And this dude is running. I was saying he looked like, you know, when they show highlights of Babe Ruth hitting a home run, when they show him running in fast. <laughs> the fast run. legs, yeah. He was, I think he was mocking running. I don't think he was really going to do anything because I didn't get scared, but I, when I looked in the rearview mirror and I just saw this guy, just imagine you're driving along, after a fucking working or whatever, right. you're kind of halfway out of it. And then you look in the rearview mirror and you see somebody running, but in this exaggerated way where he was like pumping his fucking arms like that. It was like he was mocking it. I didn't see it. All I saw was you go, what the, f you go, what the fuck? And you just stepped on the gas. But I was in the past. On that un underpowered fucking rental car. So it goes, ah! yeah, And all of a sudden you go, what the fuck? And I go, what? And you just stepped on the gas. You go, that guy just started running after the car. And I was like, holy shit. Because I saw one of his friends. Right. One of the just collapse. Like they were yeah, so he, hammered he just, that he didn't hit anything. He just fell. A guy just fell. And I just saw his legs go up. <laughs> Like, they were fucked up, dude. Those kids. But were... I would be lying if, like, like three times yesterday and this morning, <laughs> I woke up and I was picturing that guy running behind the car and I laughed every time. It was fucking nuts. Yeah, th those guys were hammered, man. Yeah, so we got a tip, tip of the cap to uh, the drinking ability. Yeah. Not, not encouraging that from when we come back Wednesday. We definitely like to have people try to behave more like the first show where, uh, you know, I don't feel like I'm interrupting your drinking with my, with my jokes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, that was that, – the, they were great, though. The crowds were great. Yeah. Yeah, they were great. But, yeah, man, that was that was another level. Yeah, there was. there's always a couple. There's always a couple hammered people. But that was where it was getting to the tipping point. Like Kind of like, you know, right before Hitler took power where it's just like, <laughs> what side am I going to choose here yeah, yeah. for my own survival? Is That's the, what the drunk versus sober level was. By the time I got about 40 minutes into my set, it was kind of like – Well, that's uh, the thing. You're doing, you're doing an hour plus. I'm going out there up front. You know, I could kind of see that they're animals, but, you know, I could just, you going out there, but, by the time you're halfway through your set, these guys are like six tall boys in. It's a shit show. It's a fucking shit, shit show. show. It was a shit show. Yeah. Edmonton, Edmonton was unbelievable. Edmonton, that, that venue, you remember that one with the, the, the orchestra fucking place there? Oh, yeah. That was great. So then yeah. we, we have a great time there, and then the, uh, we ended up, uh, where the fuck did we go? I remember we kept leaving the hotel we kept we drove around a bunch. You had you had to get socks. Verzi's fucking hilarious. <laughs> Verzi has not done laundry. I bought new shit, you know. Dude, we're like twenty. We're, what seventeen? 16, we were sixteen days in. Yeah, well, you got sixteen days worth of fucking socks and drawers. Yeah, I got them in a plastic bag, and then I went to the store and I bought new ones. You know. <laughs> It would have cost me the same fucking thing. Okay, we got to take a picture of your bag at some point and post it up. <laughs> How big is it getting? Yeah. You have them, he has them on the outside pouch. Well, you're checking the bag. <laughs> so I guess it doesn't matter. But uh, uh, I just did mine for the second time. I, I, that, I fucking hate having dirty laundry. Close and you go back. Past a certain amount of days. Like I'm doing three, four days in a row. Plastic bags. Stuff them in the front or whatever. But anything you do laundry that, at home, is it, do you do it or does your wife do it? Uh, my wife does it. Yeah, yeah, me too. Hey, I got her in line, you know? Okay. <laughs> <laughs>
So anyways, last week, uh, oh, wait, I got to finish the Edmonton thing. Edmonton thing. So Verzi is completely addicted to skating now, and he wants to get better at it. And um, <laughs> so we're fucking in uh, Edmonton. The next morning, we got to drive down to Calgary. And Verzi's going like, there's got to be a place here to skate. So we find out they have, uh, they have a skating rink at the mall. And not only is it a mall, it's one of the most giant malls in North America. North America, yeah. West Edmonton yeah, Mall. Yeah, rivaling, uh, what's that one in Minnesota? Mall of America. Mall of America, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, which I've been to that one too. So we go to that one. We're walking <laughs> through there with our fucking <laughs> skates. Two middle-aged guys walking through this thing with fucking skates. And uh, we walk in, there's like this giant pirate ship. I mean, like, yeah. you could sail the fucking ocean with this fucking thing. Yeah, right? it was a fuck of yeah. official. And I look on the other side, it was really deep water. And they took all this time to make it look like there was a shipwreck. Yeah. And I'm like, Jesus Christ. I mean, like, you could fucking... Yeah, it was monstrous, yeah. man. Yeah, like Shaq could drown in this water. If he didn't, that's how fucking deep <laughs> it, it was. It was huge. And then we look on the other side, and I'm like, Paul, I'm like, is that a fucking sea lion? <laughs> <laughs> they had sea lions at yeah. this thing, and they're like throwing it fish they're and shit. They fish, and it was catching A it. trainer was. Don't, it wasn't like people just walking by throwing shit from the food court. It was a trainer throwing it, and... Um, so we're just walking through the mall, walking through the mall, endless fucking mall. They had a water park there. Yeah. It was ins- I didn't look at any stores. I was too distracted by the shit in the middle. And then we finally get all the way to the ice the Ice rink. Palace. They called it Ice Palace, and we got all excited. And we're the only people with skates, just walking through, <laughs> holding our fucking dumb skates, and we get all the way to the <laughs> other side. Verzi's all excited. Like, dude, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm going to get better at this. You wait. By I was of, Yeah, I was by ready. By the end of the summer, he's already talking shit. Dude, yeah. I'm calling it right now. I'm going like, to be fucking skating backwards. You're going to be like, what the fuck happened, Verzi? Yeah. Right? And then we show up, and uh, there's a big judo tournament where the ice rink is, and they fucking put all this floor flooring all over it. We I was in there. denial. I'm like, maybe this isn't the rink. Maybe like, this, no, this is the you go, rink. Dude, it says Ice Palace, Paul. This is it. <laughs> <laughs> they covered it up. This is it. I got upset, though, at the mall, man. Remember? Remember oh, that yeah. girl, man? That really bothered me. We, we're walking through the food court, and, you know, I, we had a gyro. Great gyro at As this you place. Do. Yeah, yeah. A great gyro at this place called Jimmy the Greek. The one complaint, and you agreed, a little too much white sauce, and it was pasty. Yeah, it, got it a wasn't. Pasty. It wasn't. Yeah, it was a little pasty. You should have gone much. one scoop. He went to one, one. One scoop less and a little hot he, sauce, he, and it would have been fucking. He got excited. Fucking, he got excited. It would have been epic. Yeah, he got excited. So then I said to Bill, you know, I like a little dessert after I eat. You know, I like a little candy bar. I like a little. You know, so you like I a little know, sugar in your tank. Like, like. like <laughs> 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 so. So I go, Bill, man, there was a frozen yogurt place. I go, yeah, Pinkberry or something. So go, let's go frozen yogurt. So you go, all right. So we're walking oh, let's by. Let's paint the picture. So two middle-aged men with skates. Are now I don't trying... like how you keep saying I'm middle-aged. You are middle-aged. I'm 30. I just turned 35. 35 times two. It's 70. Most guys all fucking right. drop. Well, I call, I call like, I, I call middle-aged. Yeah, all right. Well, what would you call it? No, I, I guess you're right. I guess, you know, I always just, when I thought of it as a kid, I always felt, you, you know, it was... It no, I don't know. I, I just remember, dude, I, it's, I don't know. What would you say, 40? 40s, but I, you know. 40s? 40, people, dude, people live long, man. Dude, I'm fucking be 46. 46 times 2 is 92. You're going to really, I can't really sit there and say I'm middle-aged. I'll tell you the way I'm eating and smoking, you know. <laughs> 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 no, so, so we walk through and we, we're like, where's that, where was that uh, frozen yogurt place? Let's go to that frozen yogurt place. So we two, we see two. Young women walk by, and we figure, hey. I looked at them, and I'm like, these, these, these ladies, they're going to know where a pink They're going to know is. where a pink berry is. So we walk up, and you go first. You say to the friend, you go, hey, you, got, you guys know where. Uh, oh, and they're, good, they're good looking, too, by the way. Yeah, they're good, good looking girls, and you go up first. And you go, hey, you guys know where the frozen yogurt place is? And like. She did like a double take. Like, she did a double take so fucking rude, right? And she just was like, what? And then I looked at the other one, and I go, yeah, like a pink berry. And she kind of just like gives a shake off, like. How would I know? Like, why are you? And she fucking did. This is what she did. She did the classic pretty girl. You're clearly just asking me this because you want to talk to me thing. And I'm like, no, bitch. I want some fucking yogurt. Okay? I want fucking, I want a fucking treat. You know, I just had lunch, and, and it really bothered me, dude. And we were walking around, and I wanted to find her. I wanted to they find her. They walked past us again. They did the loop on the floor. I, I didn't know that, but I said to Bill when we got to the car, I go, I wanted to find her because I would have just went up to her and go, you know something? I found it, and you're a mean jerk. And then you go, why would you do that? You're a mean jerk. That's terrible. What am I going to call her, a cunt? Well, don't call her anything if you're going to go with mean jerk. I mean, you know. I hate that you're, pretty you're girl mentality. Jerk. That pretty girl just mentality. Just say you're mean or you're a jerk if you want to stay clean. But if you go, you're a mean jerk. No, that's you're not. Bad. You're not. You're not pretty inside. 
You're not pretty inside. She doesn't give a fuck. She's I'm... the hot girl at the mall. Paul, put yourself in her fucking pumps, all right? <laughs> <laughs> with two fucking... Fuck her. Jackasses standing there with ice skates when there's a judo tournament down the way asking if they know where the fucking... <laughs> ice cream store is <laughs> they looked at us the I, way they were supposed to i you know what dude i like a sweetheart i don't care how you i look. would love to hear them tell the story and they come and then this just creepy guy comes up like hey, you know where they are uh, yeah, hey, you you know know. yeah no. but that's the way they're gonna hear it paul paul you ever watch those fucking prison shows which you ones want? like the scared straight no, I not watch. those ones where they, they talk about the worst prisons in the country and that type of shit oh yeah i've seen a couple of those. yeah and you just sit there watching it going how the fuck would I go in there and not get raped? What would my game plan? You get scared watching it in your bedroom. <laughs> right. Women have to f- walk out of the house worried about that. That somebody's going to, you know. Dude, just imagine if... if uh, dude, I had a winter hat on with a puffy ball on top of it holding ice skates. Asking for yogurt. Yeah, but you, you, if anything, she but probably she, thought I was fucking gay. No. <laughs> you don't look gay, Paul. I know, but we you, were just asked a not, question. You're not... Your, your beard's too terroristy. You're, 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 you need to get a little more metrosexual if I you're going to do that. We, was, we had sweatpants on. Dude, we were a mess. Everybody Dude. in the fucking ground. Yeah, that's what you look my like. Beard, my beard actually fucking says everybody on the fucking ground yeah. no but dude i i don't like the pretty girl who can't be approached with a question because oh this guy's hitting on me it's it's awful and you know something the guy especially the blonde one who went like shook her head like what she's gonna be a nightmare she's a fucking nightmare for some future guy i'm telling you she's a nightmare she's and- already selfish it's over <laughs> what if she just knows what she wants and we're not it <laughs> <laughs> uh, well this is the thing dude you actually allowed, like, how old do you think they were? They were probably 21, 22. Yeah, you let a 21, 22-year-old. I mean, that's a girl at my age, not even a woman. The way she shook like, it you off. Let her, like you let her what? ruin, like, dude, we're driving down to Calgary. Yeah, she ruined, like, We got a half the hour. Rocky Mountains on the right-hand side of the car, and you're just still calling. You're calling her a cunt the whole way down. <laughs> <laughs> it bothered the shit out of me. It was like, why, are you, why would you ask me? How would I know? Dude, do you realize how funny that is that they did that to us? Like, what? Like, yeah, they really made us feel like shit. That's fucking hilarious if you look at it. It bothered and me. And the whole time is because you wanted to get frozen yogurt. Dude, how funny would it be if we chased him down and I Dude, went Dude, you up got to frozen him? yogurt with sugar-free gummy bears on it. Yeah, it was so all natural. No, organic gummy bears. How great would it be if we chased him down and I just walked up to her and I go, you know something? You hurt my feelings. <laughs> I just fucking broke down. <laughs> you know, I'm, you hurt my feelings. I just wanted yogurt. <laughs> oh, by the way, for people listening here, this is last week, you know, you know, just trying to kill, just trying to make jokes to not go out of your mind being on tour this fucking long. Yeah. Is we were doing the danger field. Everything. Oh, I'll tell you, I got a friend of mine who loves yogurt, you know? <laughs> so we were doing that. <laughs> and, and once that went away, that got old. Somewhere along the line, you started doing it. You started saying really sentimental shit to me and then pretending like you were crying. And then that just became like the running joke. And then you started laughing and then you were just like, you got to do that on stage. Do that crying thing. So now we'll just go up and like if we'll be like, hey, man, I'm tired. But, dude, you know what? Hanging with, hanging with you on the road has been great. You're the only one I could have done it with. <laughs> <laughs> And then Bill would come and tag it. That's the best thing. Bill would come and tag it. I would just be like, I I was hoping you were going to say that. (laughs) (laughs) But dude, it's been it's been fucking wonderful for my anger. I'm going to try to do that when I get home. Just pretend like I'm crying, man. It's fucking hilarious. So two stories. We go in to eat, and we have this Filipino waiter, right? By the way, I like to play the games where I say, "Where the hell were we? Was that Edmonton?" Was that Calgary? That was Edmonton. Yeah, it was Edmonton. So I like to do this thing where sometimes I like to fuck with people. So I'll just get on a phone and I'll be like, Bill, go along with it. And we'll be in an elevator and I'll go, what? No, that's horseshit. And like Bill just be like, what happened? So like I said, like he had a parole officer called and he said, and Bill goes, oh, they worked it up. And then instantly Burr goes, yeah, but what about that videotape? I go, no, no, they said it's insubmissible. (laughs) And like, and like the guy, there's just a stranger there, right? Sometimes I break out laughing. So. Bill calls it, he gets a little emotional guy. So we, we turn this crying thing we do into like, this has been great, <laughs> right? <laughs> we, turn, we turn that into doing it in public. So we have this Filipino waiter, right? And the whole guy, guy was great. And he was talking to us. And at the end, I just go, he goes, uh, here's your bill. And I go, I just want to say something. 
<laughs> and I kept a dead straight face. And I go, you've been a great waiter, man. And I, <laughs> and I put my hand on his fucking arm. And I go, you know what? You're bringing the waters. You just, and Bill just looks at him and goes, he gets a little, he gets a little emotional. You know what I mean? I go, no, but it's been, it, it means a lot. <laughs> Guy didn't know what to do. Guy had no. Because he was so fucking polite. And he was actually from the Philippines. <laughs> So he's in, Dude, you, know. you jumped right in perfectly. Yeah. My friend, he gets a little emotional. I go, no, but Bill, he'd, he'd bring the waters. No, oh, dude, he, he was freaked out, though. No, that's the new game on the road. But you it's had called, the best called... one. I got to say the best one was at the airport yesterday. We got to the airport yesterday, and Bill starts busting my balls about my laundry. And he goes, Verzi, fucking 16 days, and you're carrying, you know, dirty socks and underwear? And I go, dude, I go, I bought new ones. You know, the dirty ones are tied up tight in a, in a plastic bag. And Bill just goes, just like your emotions. <laughs> and, dude, I fucking could not walk. I couldn't walk. And I had to stop pulling my fucking my, – my, the bag I checked because we were laughing so hard. It, it, it works, though. It makes it, it, makes it fucking yeah. great. It's driving our tour manager nuts. Oh, yeah. That's the one thing Leanne. we got. Uh, well, yeah. because women don't want to see a guy getting emotional like that. It's just – Well, no, because once somebody oh, cries, it's over. Yeah, like when I go out afterwards and I'm – taking pictures with people and stuff i always come back and i was just like i gotta tell you you know i've seen a lot of people do that you know doing the picture thing but you gotta be one of the best <laughs> <laughs> Dude, our wives going, she's going would you stop fucking oh, doing that our wives are gonna go nuts because you know the first thing i when i see stays and you see your wife we're just gonna go it's been so long i missed you so much no you got you got to set it up with talking like you got to start off normal like the, you're gonna say something really sentimental to him so they're almost crying, and then you cry, which ruins their crying. And I swear to God, you get slugged in the shoulder, which is all you really want. Um, how many minutes in here? I think it's time to do a little advertising here. You know, oh, okay, what do we got? Did I just shut it off? No, I didn't. Oh, shit, 20 minutes in. I'll tell you, Paul, you know, time really flies with you on the podcast. <laughs> it's been so fun. <laughs> this is probably only funny to us, but I don't give a shit. Try it with your friends. Oh, well, fuck that. If people the aren't game, laughing, The game them. is called... He gets emotional and just walk into a bar, just have one of your friends start hitting on a woman and then And then starts, the other friends gotta go along. Yeah, and then just starts welling up and then the other guy goes, I'm sorry, he just gets emotional and you just gotta let the other person deal with it. Dude, you're one at the fucking airport where you walked up to that lady at the the, con, uh, the little fucking I sell gum, whatever the hell it is. And she's like, uh, excuse me, do you have the uh, you have the you have What the, are the biggest no I, I broke out oh, yeah. I go, Hey hey man, how you doing? What are the biggest condoms you got? Yeah, what's the biggest size condoms you have? I turned around and walked away. And you turned around and walked away and I'm just staring <laughs> at her and I'm biting my tongue as hard as I can to not laugh and then I just burst out laughing and no, I had to she walk said out. what and then when you went to re repeat it you <laughs> started to try to point to it and I lost it. You lost it and had to walk away. Uh, <laughs> Paul, we're punch drunk out here. All right, I gotta do a little um gotta do some advertising here. Okay. Hulu plus Everybody, uh, you've probably tried Hulu.com. This is new. This is Hulu Plus. You can watch your favorite shows anytime, anywhere with Hulu Plus. They told me to stress plus this week. Hulu Plus lets you watch thousands of hit TV shows and a selection of acclaimed movies on your television or on the go with your smartphone or tablet. And it all streams in HD for the best viewing experience possible. This is incredible, Paul. You can watch stuff right on your phone in HD awesome. quality with Hulu Plus. I like this. You can watch your favorite current TV shows like Saturday Night Live, Community, and Family Guy. You can also check out exclusive content including Hulu originals like The Authams, starring SNL's Seth Meyers and Moon Boy starring Chris O'Dowd from Bridesmaid. With Hulu Plus... Uh, also offers a great selection of acclaimed films. For only seven ninety nine a month, you can stream as many TV shows and movies as you want, wherever you want. How do you get it? Right now, you can try Hulu Plus free for just two weeks when you go to HuluPlus.com slash Bill. This is a special offer for just my listeners. Make sure you go to HuluPlus.com slash Bill so you get the extended free trial and that they know I sent you. Go to HuluPlus slash Bill now or click on the Hulu Plus banner. On the podcast page at BillBird.com. Oh, we're like, a, we're like a morning radio show here. All right. Dollar Shave Club, everybody. Okay, guys, you've heard me talk about how much I love. Love! DollarShaveClub.com. So why haven't you joined? It makes your life so much better. Like you don't have anything better to do than go to the store or anything better to spend your money on than raises? What's wrong with you? In the last two years, DollarShaveClub.com has served, has saved hundreds of thousands of dollars uh, what? 100,000 of guys' time by delivering amazing razors and high-quality grooming products right to their door. Go to dollarshaveclub.com forward slash burr. Shave with their razors. I'm a 4X guy, but my buddy swears by his executive. Is that my 
split personality talking there. Um, and check out Dr. Cabazizi Shave Butter. <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> this stuff is amazing. It makes shaving feel like you're softly wiping whiskers off your face. Oh, what a visual that is. Tremendous writing there. And you can't forget about one wipe Charlie's, the butt wipes for men. That's right, a butt wipe for men. Peppermint tingle, enough said. <laughs> Try it out. Your sphincter will love you. Is that the right word for your asshole? Uh, what are you waiting for? You can get deliveries every other month if you need, and you can cancel any time if you don't like it. DollarShaveClub.com wants, uh, wants you to be great and keep extra cash in your pocket. Uh, I'm a m member of DollarShaveClub.com. Now it's, it's your turn. Dude, we've already made the point. Why are we still going here? Shave time, shave money. Join DollarShaveClub.com. Go to DollarShaveClub.com forward slash burr to let them know that I sent you. That's DollarShaveClub.com forward slash burr. Oh, Jesus. What do we got left here? I'll, I'll save. I'll save those. One, one more here, Paul. What do you think? Back to the podcast? Back Whatever. to the podcast. There we go. Back All right. To the podcast. Back to the podcast. All right. I'll tell you what happened in join up here. Oh, let me tell you. Dude, they show fucking uh, hockey highlights. You can't believe. I'm not watching any games like because I'm traveling and I'm totally staying up on it. Like, you know, like that uh, Sunday night when they show all the football highlights. It's incredible. Everywhere we've gone down to sit, there's been a TV within our right there playing hockey. Staying right up on it. I'm watching the Bruins win. I'm watching Tyler Sagan having a great year, but they got smoked by the Sabres. I watched the Flyers highlights have a big win over, over uh, the Penguins. I know Vancouver just beat Luongo down in Florida. I know that fucking old, old uh, uh, flashy toes there is back between the pipes in Montreal. <laughs> <laughs> Price. Yeah. Hey, look at me now. Vanek got his first goal as a, uh, a Canadian. I'm sitting there watching this, Paul, as I'm having a beer with you and Ugh. an Irish coffee in a pub around the corner. Ugh. And my listeners know that I never drink on St. Patrick's Day. It's fucking amateur night, to use Jackie Gleason's famous phrase. Not if you do it early enough, though. I think it's amateur hour tonight. Listen, not if. But we'll be there. Not right. if you're in your hotel and all of a sudden they say there's a gas leak and you can fucking smell it. Oh, how about and that? And you have to run down the stairs. Then what are you supposed to do? Yeah, how about you that? You left half your shit in the room yeah. and you walk up the street and there's a guy with bagpipes playing. The green alligator in a long neck goose. You're not going to go in there? <laughs> you know, I'm glad you were, had to look at the band. I'm glad that you're, you're my vantage point with my back to them and you had to look. Because when she went into that like Irish hip-hop beat and I just turned for a second and saw her like jumping up and down, I just I probably would have lost Oh, yeah. She yeah. just going like it. I love what you said where you go, dude, I hope this is good because if it's not, I'm just going to have to stare at my beer. <laughs> yeah, because she, she introed it, and it was good. I just did a brutal uh, version of it, but it was more saying. No, like, it was okay. It was, they were actually very talented. They were saying this is like Scottish uh, beatboxing. And I just looked at Paul, and I go, Paul, she's about ready to do Scottish beatboxing from the old country. And I go, this is either going to be amazing, <laughs> or I'm going to have to sit here staring at my beer. <laughs> uh, Vancouver's awesome. Praying though, for it to be over. Well, let's go to the gas leak. So we're, we're sitting here in the hotel. Oh, yeah. And, um, you know. I know Verzi is not a morning person. I have not called you one. F I haven't woken you up other than if we're going to the airport just to make sure you're coming. So if we have a day off, I don't fuck with you. I, I let you wake up. Yeah, it's, it's, a great, it's great. I don't poke the bear. So I know that we're going to do the podcast. We were going to try to do it around 12 noon here. And because uh, I'm trying to sleep off this little cold that I've, I've caught. But um, all of a sudden you, you call me. I'm like, oh, great. Verzi's up. And then you're like, dude, dude, did you hear, hear what's going on? There's a gas leak in the building. They told us to get out of here, and I'm just sitting there like... Oh. No, I was walking out to yeah. go get lunch, and all of a sudden I see a construction worker come in, filthing, and he just runs in. And he goes, hey. Yeah, hey, running. We got it running. Like, it scared me. As I'm walking out, he just goes, hey, we got a gas leak, and I just smell, and there's a hundred construction workers outside and just warning people to run down the street. It was like a fucking scene. So I'm going, oh, shit. Bill's up there. So let me call Bill. Because it's a friend I am. <laughs> Don't say shit that you thought about me. <laughs> 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 so, so I call Bill and I go, dude, you gotta. I go, there's a gas leak and it smells. You got, they're gonna probably evacuate. You go, you you cut me off. You heard gas leak and they're probably gonna evacuate. You go, dude, I'm on my way down. And yeah, you just no, got no, the no, fuck. No. You got the fuck out of here. I there. don't mind getting blown up. I'm worried about burning to death. So I had to get the fuck out of there. So I'm grabbing everything, and I'm sitting there going, I gotta get out of here. I gotta get out of here. And I grab my watch and I'm like, that's gonna be the move right there that fucking kills me. So I go outside, <sighs> you know. Try to find the exit, and I'm running down the thing. And when I got to the, the right to right where I got, I'm on the fifth floor, okay? These, these construction guys were working on some sort of line in the street, and somebody yeah, fucked hit, up and hit, hit something. something. Yeah. 
So I got right to the uh, fire escape doors, dude, and it smelled like when you go to light a grill and you think you have uh, some juice left in your automatic lighter and there isn't, and you just take that extra three seconds to find some matches, and then you light it and it goes, <laughs> you know, yeah. you're like, whoa, what the fuck? That's what it smelled like a little more intense. And I'm thinking, I'm on the fifth floor of this fucking place. Yeah. So I ran down those stairs um, and went out the side. And then I got out the side of the building thinking, okay, I'm safe. And I still smelled it almost worse. And I was standing right outside the hotel yeah. trying to find you, and I could still smell it. I'm like, if this whole fucking thing's going up, I'm going to get knocked on my ass here because it the, at the least because i can still smell this shit i got a hat on with the pom-pom paul i'm gonna go up like a fucking bowling alley so then they finally t- they told all of us to get the hell out of the way and we yeah. backed up we went down the street we got some breakfast and i thought it was a really nice moment <laughs> <laughs> it's never not funny the nice thing, anyways the nice thing is you got you got the out here you wouldn't have blown you wouldn't have burned Right with the balcony? Because I got a bal. Well, I have a balcony on on the fifth floor, and then there's like a patio right on the other side of it. I don't know, Paul. When that's you're hilarious. on fire, well, I don't want to. Bl- I don't mind blowing up. I just don't want to burn to death. Well, I have to. Change. No, that's fucking yeah. awful. Yeah, if there's an explosion, I want to die. I don't want to be coming out, you know, running down the street like that naked girl in the Vietnam picture. That girl, like, she got burned by fucking Agent Orange. That's what she's. She's running down the street because skin is Ugh. hanging off her fucking Ugh. backside. Ugh. Horrible. Ugh. It's fucking horrible, Paul. Yeah, but this. Uh, how how great is Vancouver? Yeah, now that we got the image of a naked girl running down the street on fire. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's all, but that's what I was thinking of. Yeah, no. That's... Sorry, that image touched me when I saw it. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody should die like that. <laughs> <laughs> I swear to God, I hope they're finding this funny. This is going to be the most annoying podcast ever. <laughs> Whatever, fuck you. You go to Canada for 20 days dancing like a monkey. You, you have to come up with some shit, too. We get emotional. Yeah. Um, Vancouver, yeah, Vancouver's great. Love it. I loved Edmonton. Calgary, unfortunately, I didn't get a chance. Like, that, that street uh, right outside our hotel, man, had all these bars and all these great places to eat. Really, really fucking fun towns. Yeah. And um, when I was in Winnipeg. Oh, Winnipeg was rough, you know. No, let me tell you, those people are tough, okay? Well, I saw a guy the other day. I don't know how to finish it. But no, dude, Winnipeg was like, <laughs> you know me, I don't like to fly. When I, after Winnipeg, I was like, let's go to the airport. Like, and, and, and the people were great. And the food was great. Look, there's no way. You, you like that part of the world to live there in the winter time. It's you have to be a special kind of tough, or you're you're out the second you turn eighteen. Like fuck you, parents, you're out. Yeah, no, the people were great. The food was great. We had great food. food. Was outstanding. Was that that tortier I had, which is a uh, French Canadian uh, yeah, like a meat, meat pie, pie with yeah. a flaky crust, and they had the crust underneath. They didn't they didn't skimp on that. Sometimes you order a shepherd pie or a meat pie, and they just you know, they, they fucking cook up the meat, stick it in a bowl, and then they put just the dough on the top. Yeah, and I, I want a, this thing, you know. Oh, I want I, I a, want both parents to be there, right? The one on top and on the bottom, and right? It, just it, nestling that. And you gave meat. me a piece of it. It was unreal. And I, dude, I, I had chicken salad to make you cry. You know, it was great. We had great food over there. Did you get emotional, Paul? <laughs> I've tasted a lot of things, but that was... <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, I... Yeah, when... It, but my... You know, I... I, I love the room last night. I love that. Like, it's like kind of like a beacon theater right up front. That's what I loved. Edmonton was like long. Edmonton room almost was like Carnegie. It was just deep yeah. and layers. I was know? on that night, dude. I went out there and the fucking ADD was working to my – sometimes it fucks me up. It was working great. Oh, was, dude, just, Edmonton fucking. Just shuffled the deck of all my jokes and then that made me say other shit. And I was just like one of those things where I felt like I was on stage for five minutes on that one. No, dude, you f- Edmonton was oh, – that was fucking – Edmonton actually – I had a show – Stopper, where like, <laughs> what, are you, what are we in vaudeville? I had a fucking. This guy's a showstopper. No, I had a, a, show, a real no, triple threat. No, my, see? no, I had a bad showstopper. I'm, I'm saying that in a bad way. You fucking. Edmonds, oh, that was my fucking, fault. I shouldn't. No, told you to I, do that I joke. did that. I did that joke where I was just like, you know, women, you know, you guys like get personal trainers. And you, you know, you go all out for your wedding picture and your wedding day and you look great. You look like an Olympian. And then I go. And then it just kind of falls apart, but like, and the place just fucking stopped. Yeah, someone in the crowd went, "Wow!" Well, somebody, no, somebody goes, "Oh my god!" Yeah. And like, I had a the bit I did before it killed, and then I did that, and I go, "No, no," and I kind of saved it when I go, "No, what I'm saying is like, you should just come down the aisle the way you're gonna be." Like what I'm going to be looking at for the next 40 or 50 years. And like half of them laughed, but I was just like, somebody was like, well, so then I told you afterwards. And the look on your face, you were just like, wow. <laughs> yeah. Fuck. No, but I was the idiot. You said it to me in the restaurant. It was fun. It was funny to me. <laughs> so I said, dude, you got to do that on stage. 
And then somehow the way you said that you said it, I was just like, I mean, that's fucking, I mean, that, that look, dude, I mean, you can't, women have to, they have to give birth. Can you imagine no, that? That's what no I matter mean. what the fuck you do, you stay in shape, you do all that. And then if you're going to have another kid, you're basically going to have to go through that. I and mean, they're, they're angels. No, fuck. what I'm saying they're is they should. How, how could you? No, what I'm saying is, you, and this is what I'm saying, you know. I know women, dude, and, and you know my wife looks great. She had two kids and everything, and I know women go through a lot of shit and have kids. I'm saying don't put on that show for everybody else. Be who the fuck you're going to be. It's the same way people you know, clean up for company. Like right. what, the regular family's not good? You know, oh, and just being nice. Aunt, Aunt Betty, who we don't see ever, who's coming over once a fucking year, is what you got to get on the, uh, your hands and knees with a toothpick or a toothbrush. You know what? It's, I, I, I'll go with this. It does suck when it's somebody that you don't give a shit about. And your wife saying we got to clean this fucking place up, and, yeah. and they're going all. It isn't just like okay, let me let's just pick a room that we throw all the shit in and close the door. Like you, they actually want you to clean up. That they're coming in from Maryland. I don't give a fuck. I'm not going to see him again. Right. You know. Right, but as far as them looking good on the Wednesday, I want to, I want them to look as good as they can. I want to look. I good. know. I was trying to do I a joke out. and it fucking backfired. Paul, I, I I wasn't there for you as a friend, you know, and I'll tell you that's going to haunt me forever. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, but oh, what, 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 what was the name of that theater that we played in Winnipeg, man? Uh, Burton Cummings? Yeah, that yeah. place, it was, it was, an, it was, uh, I got a little, some of the history of that. That place was made in, uh, 1908. Yeah. And, uh, they had these, these fucking stairs in the back. Now everybody, Charlie Chaplin, uh, 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 who's the guy there? F uh, Fatty Arbuckle, Harry Houdini, all these, it was a vaudeville theater for like the first 30 years before the talkies took over, see? And um, they still had like the original stairs in the back when yeah. you walked up to the green room. And these are like slabs, I don't know what kind of stone it is, but from years of people walking up in it where you basically you put your feet, there was like these indentations from people scuffing up as they were walking up or coming How down. How high did it go, remember? Yeah, and then outside uh, the upper deck of it, the, I guess the mezzanine in the upper deck, they used to have pews all the way through them, and then they put seats in at some point. But in the upper deck, they still had these wooden pews. And during my set, because the acoustics are incredible, because you're talking 1908. I mean, I don't think they could really amplify voice at that point, could they? I don't know. Yeah, we don't know. We're idiots. But I don't think they could. So it it's it's, was acoustically perfect building. So when people were way up in that upper deck, we're talking like an old hockey barn for hockey fans there where, or basketball fans where you felt like – if you lean too far forward, you'd fall right on the emblem at center ice or center court. And these people would walk down. And it's making that, that sound like, you know, almost like an old chair makes all that rickety shit. And it sounded like it was right above me. And I was sitting there going, are these fucking union guys walking around making noise during my show? And I kept making jokes like that, oh, they, yeah. that they were already changing the marquee and they were over me. And what it was was people in that upper deck were walking down just to go to the bathroom and get a drink. But the acoustics were so unbelievable, and it was so fucking steep. It, it, sound, steep. it sounded like it was right above my head. Yeah. It was amazing. That was one of my... Uh, that place was old school, man. Yeah, I like old shit, dude. So I, I actually walked up there at the end of my show. I wish you did it, dude. It, was, it reminded me... Uh, there's one in, uh, in Seattle that we did, the, the Moore, Moore Theater. Yeah, yeah. Where uh, I think they shot the, uh, the video for... Even flow when I heart. That one, right? When yeah. he's fucking hanging and he's looking like he's bleary eyed, you know? Yeah, yeah. Like he's crazy, but he isn't. He knows exactly what he's doing. He already knows he wants to fire his drummer. Um, <laughs> we played that one, and that one was really interesting where just like this one that we played in Winnipeg, they have separate entrances for the upper deck. And that I don't know if they had segregation up here, but in Seattle, that, that was what that was for. That upper deck, you had a completely separate entrance, no fucking elevator, and you just walked up flight after flight after flight. And these were serious flights, like four, yeah. 14 groupings, you know, two groups of like 14 to get to one floor all the way, all the way, all the way up. And I was joking with the guy going, this is why African-Americans kick the shit out of white people cause <laughs> in sports because we just strolled into the theater. Hell oh, yes, and just have a seat. <laughs> you got to do like the fucking Stairmaster yeah. all the way up all and come back down just to see a fucking show. And that's like insanely high, man. Like that was scary high. Yeah, like, it's Like when incredible. you say steep, it's like you don't want to lean forward like steep. Like you'll fucking – it was scary. Man. Yeah, like I would not want to be like hammered. Oh, no. Up there, up there, and then, you know, smoke a little joint or something, something or smoke a cigar that made me fucking lightheaded. I would just be like – I mean, if I had to leave, I would I would go hands and knees backwards down like a little, you know, a little toddler <laughs> yeah. goes downstairs. Yeah. <laughs> That's 
how I would exit <laughs> with the uh, with the fear. You like the Burton Cummings one? I like. I think. Um, I think the Vogue last night was one of my favorites, man. Oh, dude, those were two great crowds too. Yeah, yeah. And we're not shitting on Calgary, by the way. It was just that second show, dude. It's been a while since I've been in front of uh, people that drunk. But uh, we had another amazing week. Now, when did we play hockey? Oh, wait, we went to the Bruins Canadians game. Yeah. Yeah, what, what is the name of that place? Molson Center? Yeah. Oh, they changed it. They changed it. Whatever the fuck it is now. You know, I don't know, some sort of cellular company. But uh, <laughs> it's just a, an amazing place to go to where you see all those retired numbers, all those ba- Stanley Cup banners, and just how into it people are. There was some people leaving early down below. That kind of disappointed me. Well, I, I mean, it, but it was a beatdown. It was a beatdown. You know, Bruins fucking you're killed You're down it. three goals in the third period. Hey, and I wasn't obnoxious either. I, I didn't like the guy who brought me to it. He was a Canadians fan. He said, "Hey, we're going to go into this this, you know, the famous, I don't know, one of the levels there, the mezzanine level. They have this pub." And the guy who hooked us up with the ticket said, "Listen, I know he's a big Bruins fan, but out of respect, could you just not wear stuff? It gets weird when you go in there." And I was just like, "Yeah, absolutely. I'm not going to fucking do that." Yeah, you know, yeah. I'm going to stand up and cheer when we score, but I'm not going to be that asshole going, "Yeah, yeah. in the face." You know, giving them shit or whatever. I'm not going to do that. No, no. Yeah, yeah. So I just sat there and I thoroughly fucking enjoyed it. And uh, But earlier that day, we actually, uh, some of the guys from Just for Laughs, Bruce Hill, hooked us up with some ice time. And I got the shit kicked out of me. Yeah, and Verzi played hockey for the first time. We played at this, this you know, they got a zillion rinks out there. And there was uh, old Canadian, uh, Stefan Kintel. Uh, yeah. who played, you know, back when I was first going to games and shit like that, or maybe about five years into when I started going to games. And uh, he somehow, I forget how it was, but his jersey was framed there. So anyways, we played on this little sort of mini rink where you had the floating blue line. You bring it to the zone, then the red line becomes the blue line. And I got to tell you, Verzi, fucking animal. He's out there with just gloves, a stick, and a helmet. Dude, you had like three shots on net. On like, I mean, I don't know if you try like trying to tap rebounds in his shots on that. I don't know how that fucking works, but dude, you had like three and one shift, yeah. and I was sitting there laughing on the bench because this fucking guy's got more shots on net in one shift. Well, one of the guys was the like, "Dude, you might, I said like we were talking like maybe throughout the whole game, I might have had like twelve shots on, but I didn't know how to stop. I got the shit kicked out of me. I'm falling down, and everyone's got pads but me. So I'm the most novice in this thing." <laughs> <laughs> All right, and the only thing I had was gloves and a helmet. I'm falling on my knees and elbow, getting and like it was so legit that there were two locker rooms. You had your own jerseys. There was a timer. These guys yeah. had shifts, and I'm getting thrown into this thing. Okay, I haven't been on the ice. Now since. you know why I've been dragging all my stuff up here because it's yeah. like if we're gonna play. I want to make sure I'm protected, and I'm not gonna wear somebody else's smelly stuff. That's fucking, that's gross, dude. That's like the pad version of using your buddy's toothbrush. It's gross. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, but, and, and and typical me, I'm like I don't know how to play, but I just know scoring position from floor hockey. So I just would go down, get into scoring position, not know how to stop, and just fucking get the shit kicked out of me. I, I would, I'll tell you this: one thing a coach would never have to tell you is go to the net. That's all you did. The second your team, the second your team got the puck, I just went. To you the didn't net. understand offsides, though. You were offsides a couple of times. Oh, what yeah. the fuck, dude? You would just put your head down. <laughs> And just, and just start <laughs> skating. And you had your stick on the ice. The wrong way. Because oh, yeah. every time I shot, I wouldn't need a lefty stick. So I had the righty stick, which yeah. had an opposite. And I kept doing backhands with the wrong stick. But I did yeah, hit the post your, on your, that one. Your backhand was lethal because you had a right-handed stick. Everybody thought you were right-handed. And he's going down. I'm going, look at this fucking guy. He's got like all these shots in the neck. And he's playing left-handed with a right-handed stick. It was all right. Yeah. Yeah. No, man. No, you're good, man. You're, you're, you're good at it. I, I was Oh, thank tired. you. I was hoping you were going to say something, you know, because I'm a little self-conscious about it. <laughs> I definitely recognized it. <laughs> Um, I skate all right until I get the puck. I just, I swear to God, dude, it's just, it all falls apart. You know what's the funniest thing when I play with guys? It's two passes to me before my, no, you're before, fundamentally. My, before my whole team figures it out. And then it's just like, yeah. you know, I, then I have to be like literally going across the blue line screaming, believe in me, <laughs> something to get the fucking puck back. But they know. No, but you did. You you had some good passes, shot on goal. There was a I like dude, playing. Dates. There was a thirteen year old kid there. There was a fourteen year old kid there, and these and I just was like, but I almost hurt myself. Remember, I slammed my head, dude. Yeah, that was bad. I was like, no, I knew you were going to be. So everyone was saying, hey, go take some Advil, and you're like, no, no, dude, I feel fine. I feel fine. And when you fall, like the way you were falling, those are those deep fucking bruises, and they yeah. don't show up for at least twenty four hours. 
the best thing Bruce did, he goes, dude, you don't want a concussion, and he he brings me a helmet, and I slip back. Oh, dude, if you if the way you fell on my head, dude, that would I would have been over. Oh yeah, that would have had that awful, hunk, that fucking sound of a oh. head hitting the back of a head hitting the ice. Oh my god, I, I fell so bad one time. Somebody skating by, I thought it was you. Somebody just goes, you got air on that one. Like I was getting the shit kicked out of me. But this is the thing, though, you were doing it. To yourself. Just let people know. It's not like people were knocking him down. This was a non-contact game. Paul would just go head of fucking steam <laughs> like you were going to run the I goalie never played, or something. I never, the best compliment I got was when I, somebody goes, I go, I never played ice hockey before. And he was like, wow, you got good balance. And I was like, have you been watching? Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> hey, let me do, let me do uh, advertising. We, we, got some, uh, we got some great questions uh, this week. Uh, all right. Uh, Stamps.com, everybody. I know it's tough deciding where to focus your resources to grow your business. But one thing I can tell you, you don't need to waste valuable time going to the post office for mailing and shipping. Just use Stamps.com to access all the services of the post office right from your desk 24-7. Buy and print official U.S. postage using your own computer and printer. Get postage for any letter or package any class of mail, all for just a fraction of the cost uh, of an expensive postage meter. With Stamps.com, you'll never have to go to the post office again, so you can spend your time where it matters most, focused on your business. I use Stamps.com to send out all my DVDs, my T-shirts, my posters, Paul, whatever crap I'm selling at the end of one of my little dances uh, right now. Use my last name, Burr, B-U-R-R, for this special offer. No risk trial, plus a $110 bonus offer that includes a digital scale and up to $55 free postage. Don't wait. Go to Stamps.com before you do anything else. You click on the microphone at the top of the homepage and type in Burr. That's Stamps.com. Enter Burr. Dude, I fucking killed that one. Um, E-voice. Now that I said that, now I'm going to be in my head. Watch this one. All right. <clears throat> Regroup. Okay? We still got another half to play. Okay. I just don't want to mess it up. (laughs) E-Voice, you're a business owner, but automated phone systems and secretaries are not in your budget just yet. And juggling incoming calls yourself makes it hard to look like a professional. Here's something that will dramatically help you make more money in 2014. E-Voice, whether you're a business of one or 100, E-Voice will help you manage all of your incoming calls. With a toll-free number, dial-by-name directory, and call routing tools, your business will sound like a million bucks. Can't take a call? No problem. Evoice will transcribe the voicemail and email it right to you. Never be caught off guard again. And with Evoice, you can try it before you buy it. Right now, just for my listeners, you can get a 60-day trial to Evoice for absolutely free. Go to evoice.com and enter the promo code BILL, B-I-L-L, at checkout. Take charge of your business and make more money in 2014. Go to evoice.com and enter BILL at checkout for your 60-day free trial. That's evoice.com, promo code BILL. Damn. That wasn't bad. Killing it. Crushing it. One more, people. Uh, Here we go. LegalZoom. If the excitement of starting your business, getting your first customer, and finally quitting your job hasn't moved you to action yet, here's another great reason to get started. It's National Start Your Business Month, everybody. That legal suit wants to help you start your own corporation or LLC or file a DBA so you can get up and running quickly and easily. Find out why more than 1 million entrepreneurs use LegalZoom to start down the path of successful business ownership. This month only, take advantage of their National Start Your Business Month special and get a free three-month trial of the all-new QuickBooks making it so much easier to run your new business. That's $119 value for absolutely free when you enter Burr in the referral box at checkout. That's LegalZoom.com, promo code Burr. LegalZoom provides provides self-help services and can connect you with the right attorney, but they are not a law firm. LegalZoom, promo code Burr. There you go. I went, you know, I'm up two games to one. (laughs) Um, all right, back to the uh, back to the, the the podcast here. Oh, before I go any further, everybody, um, one of my favorite comics that's on his way up the comedy ladder, uh, Tom Segura from uh, the uh, Your Mom's House podcast, right here on the All Things Comedy Network that he does with his lovely and absolutely fucking hilarious wife, Christina Pazitsky. Pizitz- I'm the worst trying to read. Um, Tom has a new special out called Completely Normal. That you can download as of March 15th on iTunes. Um, I love this guy because he's just one of those. He doesn't give a shit in a good way. Like he goes out. He's not afraid of silence. He has something to say. Dude, him and his wife, arguably. Okay. I know Burns and Allen. Fuck them. Okay. (laughs) You want to go with these two. They crush it. Like we have like those all things comedy shows sometimes. Um, 
we were doing them down at Luna. And uh, and Christina came down one night and absolutely just fucking destroyed. I'm trying to think we had we had, we had Tom down there too. I've watched Tom at like the Improv Forever, but um, he he's the real deal and he's on his way to making his mark. Uh, and he has a new a new uh, comedy special out. Like I said, completely normal. So check it out. All right, first question of the week. And Paul, I know you're going to love this one because you've been absolutely obsessed with this. Uh, this says the the name of the question is Where's the plane? Oh yeah, let's go. Uh, he says, Bill, using whatever knowledge you have of the situation, whether it be a lot or a little, please break down what happened on that plane. Um, this is right up my alley. First of it's all, right up your I've alley. been annoying you. And you, Yeah, and you hate flying. I'll tell you, we know it's annoying is I have to blow my nose because I'm coming on with the cold. So why don't you start as I walk over here to blow my nose off mic because I'm a professional. What do you think, Paul? You're the guest. I'll let you go first. Here, would you like a glass? Go ahead. What do you think? Uh, I think that – I think obviously the plane was hijacked. I think that's why the um, – the, uh, uh, you know, it's hard to <laughs> – Sorry. No, uh, Can I, you hear that on, on, on the mic? Um, uh, yeah, a little bit. I think the plane was hijacked. Um, of course, I think that's why there was – the communication was cut out, and then they have proof that it kind of uh, diverted. And, and changed its course, and then nobody heard anything. I think the fact that the fucking thing is not in the water, there's 230 people on a 777. I flew that. I've flown in a 777 to uh, Italy. Oh, yeah, dude. That that's your a, nickname. That Paul's is, 777. That, that, that is a, yeah, I mean, that's what I fly in. No, um, and... and <laughs> And there was. There I won't was, go unless it's was, a seven. If it's seven, not a seven, yeah, yeah. If it's not. If it's glass. It's hey, glass the whole way. It's a lucky number, you know. Okay. <laughs> you think I'm in that seven thirty seven? You nuts? <laughs> no. So, uh, <laughs> so there was no debris, nothing. So I don't think that the. I think that the plane. They said that the plane could have flown for six hours after they lost contact. That fucking thing could be anywhere right now. There's going to be a movie about this. I think. I hope they didn't off everybody. You know, God, God forbid. But right. I think the plane landed somewhere and was hidden. And then I think the people that did it. I think I don't know what I don't know what they did with the people, but uh, you know I don't think it's in the ocean. So all right, let's you know, come on, you got to put some money on. Well, listen, what, I, I what, don't. What country are you picking? Kazakhstan. They said it could have gone as far as Kazakhstan, Tajikistan, all of those stands. Uh, I am from Kazakhstan, Borat, <laughs> Kazakhstan. I I think, uh, yeah, dude, I think that it landed somewhere and it's fucking. It's just an awful situation, but um, you know, I I this is what I think. It's the aliens, Bill. You think? <laughs> I don't know. I think uh, with each day that passes that there's no sort of demand or anything like that. I'm thinking more, unfortunately, and I don't know, sadistically or whatever, they flew it way off course. And I don't know. I mean, how – unless you dump a plane in like the shipping lanes, what is, what is the odds? But planes have some, a beacon. Planes have a beacon. But it was turned f- off. I, I mean, I don't know. There's something that, that where they can track it was fucking turned off. And the people knew how to do it. So I think with every passing day, yeah, like it's not a good – like there, there's no demands. It's just really weird that, that if – you know, there's always some crazy reason to draw attention to something that someone does something like this. The fact – the only hope that I have is the fact that they haven't asked for any demands yet is, is – I, I don't know. That, I mean what? You wanted the plane? I mean, what, what the fuck, you know? How fucked but up what, is your country? You can't get a seven seventy seven. Christ, they're laying all over the place. But Paul. what's the motive of the what's the motive of the hijackers? Uh, I don't know, but I I really felt for the the family members because they're sitting there and they're talking about the airline, how the airline is handling this like a a business rather than you know what is going on. And they go, we can't comment on anything right now because basically. You know, it's a corporation. They're like, we're going to get the shit suit out of us. Let's let's try to limit how much we're going to get the shit suit. Like they go into that fucking mode. Yeah. But it's one of those awful things where, you know, um, also, you know, the victims are going to go into we're going to sue the shit out of your mode. So it's just like if people could just in this moment, if the airline could be allowed to just say we're fucking devastated. I mean, we had employees on that plane. Two, you know, and they could everybody could just share information and there wouldn't be that stupid, you know, lawyers licking their chops on both sides or one cowering and the other guy, other side licking their chops. Maybe they, they could at least make it a little more comforting for those people. But uh, 
Yeah, it's and you know, I guess there's no comedy here, dude. That's just it's fucking. I just awful, feel man. I just feel I just feel bad for you know those kids on there and shit, man. It's fucked up, man. It's awful, and it, it's one of the most pr- unprecedented uh, mysteries. Like a seven seventy seven with fucking two hundred and thirty people has disappeared, and nobody knows where it is, and the airlines don't have answers. And ten countries had their navies fucking just scowl at the fucking ocean, and nobody could find it. Right, it's crazy, man. Well, I mean, there's a kind of good thing there that maybe what they're, they're still alive and there's something you can do to negotiate. But the thing about uh, trying to land a plane like that, it's not like you could just go to some boot, bootleg fucking airstrip. I mean, you need, a, you need a lot of fucking runway to land something that big. It's not like you could go to fucking, right. you know, some little ass, you know. Unless they had it planned. Unless they had it planned in a hangar. Yeah, but then what the, what the fuck? So what are you doing? So, you, okay, you, you got us. You took the fucking plane. You took the people. What do you want? Where are the people? It's annoying. Yeah. I mean, they, they, I mean, I wonder if, if they had a plan and then some, they shut everything off and then something else went wrong. How I mean, they, because how, they got to be looking at satellite footage, like say even like remote areas, jungles and shit, looking for pictures of smoke and fire, something to try and find the fucking thing. I mean, look. The biggest mystery still on the planet is the ocean. So I think that that's where it is. It's at the bottom of the fucking ocean in some place where we can't find it. I hope it isn't, but that's what I would guess, just for the simple fact that it's just weird that nobody claimed responsibility. There's no ransom demands. Um, I mean, how do you sneak a fucking 777 into something? With the amount of fuel they had, they know the distance it could go. There had to be something, dude. There had to be something. The fact that it's not, it should be on every fucking, like, it, I don't think that there's enough coverage of it. You know? They got a picture of Justin. You know what? They, they, well, what the fuck? They probably would be a lot. Well, I, at some point when there's no new information, it becomes like this fucking 250, 270 person cold case file they're, yeah. trying, they're trying to find. It's insane. It's fucking insane. It is. It is. And and that's why I kept asking you every day. We'd go hang out and Bill would go, Paul, I can't fucking – you keep talking about it. And I'm like, I can't get it. I don't get it. Because you, you got this obsession with fucking planes and safety because you know, you're afraid to fly. I don't fucking think about shit like that. And yeah. now, now your, your fear is starting to rub <laughs> off me. I'm getting scared when I go to the airport. <laughs> I didn't mean to project my fears on you. It's okay. <laughs> you're only human. <laughs> 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 All right, uh, what, uh, whatever. I, I really hope that that ends. You know, I hope there's a yeah. Happy there's some sort of that. Chuck Norris Delta Force thing that <laughs> ends it fucking happily. But that is a rough sit. Oh my god, the fucking poor people. They got to just t- 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 sit there wondering when, when, what's going on? Are they suffering now? What's going on? It's terrible. Yeah, it's awful. All right, great question, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what's your beef, dear Farmer Bill? If you could only eat one type of meat and one type of vegetable for the rest of your life, what would they be? Got to figure some choices are more versatile in the kitchen. All right. Uh, I wouldn't go fish because I I would worry that I'd get the mercury thing. Um, I couldn't go red meat because I end up like John Wayne. Chicken is all slimy in your fucking entrails. I would have to go. uh, What else is there? Turkey? I go turkey. I'd go chicken because if you ch- cook it, if you cook it enough, like you'll get any kind of. But yeah, you're right. You, the mercury in the fish, red meat, your bowel, your fucking mercury in the fish, and God knows what that meltdown in Japan has done to the fucking sushi. Jesus. Oh, I had sushi yesterday, man. Fuck. Yeah. Yeah, I love fucking sushi. You know. Yeah, you know I, what you got to do, Paul. You know. Yeah, what are you gonna do? You're not gonna have there. sushi. But uh, no, I'd go chicken and vegetable. I hate vegetables, so I, man, it's maybe spinach, a little garlic. You know, I love vegetables. Oh, that chicken, would actually you can make, make chicken me fucking parm. sad. If I, this is like fucking sad. So I guess I would have turkey every day with. Uh, I almost want to pick a vegetable that I don't love because I don't want to end up hating it because I have to eat it every day. Cauliflower every day for the rest of you. Fucking, I already hate that shit. No, cauliflower is. Unless they make the cauliflower mashed potatoes. Those aren't, those aren't bad. But the only reason why it's not bad is because you got all the butter and salt and pepper in there. Yeah, but he, yeah, I mean, he just, I, w- I would go turkey because I can make a turkey sandwich. I can make turkey sausage. I can make shrimp this, shrimp that. I, we saw that guy in Montreal. Yeah, I know. Uh, that actor. We were in the elevator with Bubba. Bubba Gump. And I, I didn't rec- I only saw that movie once. Yeah, I walked in there and I was like, oh shit. And then we walked out. I was like, you know who that was, dude? I was like, yeah, he was in Heat. He was, that was fucking. And he was funny and that really was, friendly. And he was too. funny and insanely friendly. 
And uh, and then I wanted to go up and say something or invite him to his show, and I was just like, let me fucking leave this guy alone. Right. They, oh, you said you saw another. There was a bunch of people. They were filming a movie in a hotel. Turkey bacon. Turkey. Trying to think all the different fucking ways I could do it. Well, you wouldn't go turkey. Turkey, you'd be a nightmare. After your fifth turkey sandwich, you'd be like, I fucked up. Dude, after chicken every fucking day. Chicken, chicken, chicken parmesan, uh, chicken scampi. You're doing what I just did. Chicken, 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 no, you're going, turkey, you're turkey, going turkey, turkey sandwich, turkey sausage. I'm talking, you could put marinara with um, melted mozzarella. That's fucking, that's good for a month. You know, then Every you, fucking day, then you'd, you'd be a tub of shit. You'd be a tub of shit, dude. You're going to eat chicken palm every other day? You wouldn't be a tub of shit if you eat chicken every day. You know, you got to mix it up. Chicken palm with all the pasta and all no, that no, shit. You the fucking mix. bread, your red wine, discussing crimes, whatever you Sicilians do. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I would go turkey. I love a turkey sandwich, and I think chicken's overrated. And then, then just the shit that, you know, chickens, you know, you got the salmonella. You got all that fucking shit with that, you know. Oh, there's a problem with everything. Well, you know, Paul, maybe I have a problem with you. You ever think that? No. <laughs> I'd go chicken spinach. Chicken spinach. I would go turkey. Yeah, but turkey really doesn't go good with a vegetable. Chicken spinach is a good one. Ah, Christ, Paul, you're better at this than I am. <laughs> All right, dude, you're a, you're a fucking, you committed some crazy fucking murder. Yeah. You're on death row. You got your final meal. What are you going to have? Oh, oh, shit, man. No, let me tell you, that's a rough one, you know? <laughs> that was so funny. You asked me that. I, le- I had to actually lean back in the chair for that one. That's a that's tough, man. This is assuming you could eat. You okay. weren't so nauseous that they're going to fucking kill me here. Yeah, I never understood that. They showed a list of what all the serial killers got. And like one guy, well, like one guy, like Bundy or one of those guys just got an apple. But another guy got fucking like he wanted a whole pie with like pepperoni. He wanted sandwiches. And like he got the whole thing. Like he just like everything. That's that he- a true fucking like. Crazy, man. Yeah. Like to be able to sit, you know what I like mean? He's at like, a food court. Like the guy eating an apple, he's probably just like, let me just taste one last thing. Well, Ted my... Bundy was a fucking animal. I don't know if it was Bundy. It might have been that McVeigh guy that blew no, up. No, Timothy a... McVeigh, and I remember this. He, he had an apple. He got a pint of mint chocolate chip. And that stuck with me because I was like, I love mint chocolate chip. And I eat a pint all the time. And that actually seemed like if someone was going to fucking kill me. And I don't have any sympathy for these fucking people either. But I'm just saying if someone's going to kill me, you know, it would. And I know... You know, we're, we're fucking going to kill you at this time, and it's coming up. I want something that's going to be a little easy on my stomach. And for some reason, I just think ice cream would be nice. <laughs> It'd just be comforting. <laughs> Dude, I love, I love chicken cutlets, man. Like, I know, like, I, my mind, oh, right when you ask a question, I'm thinking Italian or sushi because I love it. But I love chicken cutlets with lemon squeezed on them. So I might do, like, a shitload of chicken cutlets. You just said chicken, and I just thought chicken and dumplings, which I haven't had a long time. Is there anything better than dumplings? Dumplings oh. are great. Chicken and dumplings, and that, but then the mint chocolate chip. The mint let, wouldn't go good with the that. Did they let you drink on? De- did they let you drink on what? Uh, like on your last meal, if you ordered a bottle of red, because Dude, that would be funny if you were hammered. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what do you got? <laughs> Let's do this. <laughs> yeah, you'd, you'd, fuck you, fuck yeah. you. You guys are looking. Oh, you're gonna kill the killer, you fucking pussy. Yeah, yeah. You got enough guys. <laughs> <laughs> All my marriages were one on one. Look at you guys, five on one. Ooh, what are the odds? Uh, now you feel good about yourself? Huh? I don't think you they feel let successful. You. I don't think Hang your head on this one. <laughs> I don't think they let him drink. That'd be fucking great. Why well, you guys all have the same clothes on? <laughs> Would you all call each other? Making the other psychos laughing as you're leaving. Show me the way to go home. That judge was a fucking fag. <laughs> That's what you would do. You would, you would just start talking shit. Oh, you the would. DA, he did good. Huh? <laughs> it only took his eight years. <laughs> you go into the death chamber and all the fucking family members are looking. Ah, uh, you guys do stuff too. <laughs> <laughs> only difference between me and you is I got caught. That's all I'm saying. How you doing, sweetheart? <laughs> <laughs> that'd be fucking amazing oh dude that'd be hilarious just walking out hey buddy buddy before you do it buddy you know the way they keep asking the question buddy but it only took you five years i had those hookers <laughs> in the attic forever <laughs> dude, this is so bad hey did you uh there was, there's been a couple of guys uh you know some of the last words one of the guys was last name was french 
And he yelled over the reporters. He goes, hey. And he was going to the electric chair. He goes, hey. He goes, I got your, your headline for tomorrow. He goes, French fries. And he's like, oh, 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 like laughs. And then they electrocuted him. Dude, you see the one guy that they did it to? And he fucking, they thought he was fried and he fucking, he popped up and he was like fucking, he popped up like in a fucking horror movie. He was like a big guy and it did, he didn't, it didn't take. They electrocuted him and they're all sitting there. And they was that that to, Tom Hanks movie or that just, really happened? No, no, a guy, they showed it on, they showed it on one of those shows where they jolted him and like normally like the normal person What was out, show? And he just went, it was like one of those death row inmates or like it was like a, you know, people protesting outside. One of the guys I that I thought really, you were dead on Discovery Channel? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> And he like popped up for a second. They, they, had they to fucking popped up some... part two. <laughs> no, I'm telling you. Scared the shit out of the fuck. Hey, you got to make sure they're dead, you know? I got a friend of mine. You can electrocute them. <laughs> I got a friend of mine. can take a beat. Oh, right? this guy's rough. Okay. <laughs> Why? They put him, in the, put him in the electric chair. He got right back up. Okay. <laughs> Boy, I got a friend. He's tough, you know? <laughs> Sometimes I wish I was tougher. <laughs> <laughs> we all do, Bill. <laughs> We're not high, people. And we're not drunk. This is what Dude, we've if done. I was, if I was high right now, I'd be fucking losing my mind. All right. Uh, sad music. Oh, this is right <laughs> up our alley. Why'd you bring it up? All right. Sad music. Dear Bill, uh, from what you talk about on the <laughs> from what you talk about on the podcast, it seems like you're mostly into classic rock and music that involves really talented musicians. Uh, do you ever listen to emotional music? I mean, like a sad acoustic track. <laughs> Or just anything depressing? First, he's already losing it. If so, do you put it on when you're sad or when you're happy? No, no, no. I, I listen to that stuff. Sometimes I like to get emotional when I'm in the car. Uh, what, so what song are we singing in the car? Just once. I'm going to try to make it last if ever. Just one night. Try to do Dude. something else and something, something, something. Yeah, we fun. were doing that. Oh, we were saying we'd say that to our wives one time when they were like bitching no, at us. Like, as as How come you blah, 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 blah. And it's in the yeah. middle of them yelling. Just, just go. stare at them and just go. Just once. <laughs> <laughs> I wish you'd shut the fuck up. <laughs> I a shower. Why does there always have to be something to do? Can't we just <laughs> lie around the house just once? You know, Paul, you creep, you keep procrastinating and you sleep in late and the kids are up. Just once. <laughs> <laughs> I wish you'd let me sleep in and keep Shut it. your mouth. <laughs> you fucking talk all the time uh, and you have nothing to say. Uh, Lady. All right. Sorry. Um, sad music. Do I listen to sad music? Yeah. yeah. Probably the first sad songs I listened to other than Elton John, where he was a little too on the head. Well, what do you right? consider sad, though? Like, that's what I want to know. ACDC, Ride On, Lonely Guy on the Road. <laughs> that was probably my first one. Dude, every fucking heavy metal band had those home sweet homes. I'll tell you, you know? what's sad. You want to know what's a sad one? That we never We're got halfway one. there. <laughs> <laughs> Living on a prayer. Yeah. Uh, no, I don't. I. You know, what's a sad song? Um, I don't know. Cats in the Cradle. <sighs> you go. You're going rock, though. I'm, I'm thinking more of like the just once, like you know. Oh, you, well, you know? can't go hip hop. Hip hop, you can't do a sad song. They try to do emotional rap. Remember that? Yeah. And some people still try. Yeah, like when when one like that guy Drake, man. I just like I, I. I mean, I get it. Yeah. You know, good looking guy. He's got a beard and shit, so women like him. But like. When it just gets too, uh, I don't want to hear like, I don't want to hear a rapper opening up. No, rappers try to open up when one of their rapper friends dies, but it's never really sad. You're more just like, you know, they'll just be like, you know, they just rap and yeah. you know the way they do. Yeah, they're pouring out a forty form. That's like the most they'll do. Yeah, I like yeah. that. I keep it like that. Okay. Don't Nobody was better than you. Like it's yeah. like that. You can't get, you know. You know, one of my favorite things in this business was Opie from the Opie and Anthony show was he had this thing that he would do when guys would start crying when they would play audio. Yeah. Oh, my God. It was fucking – and his timing was perfect every time. Someone would be talking, like retiring from a sport, <laughs> like when Mike Schmidt retired, which is, you know, you, it's very difficult to watch. He was like, you know, you know, he just was ending. It's like 38 years ago, a little boy began a journey to play the wonderful game of baseball. <laughs> and then Opie would always go, oh, boy. <laughs> 
one of my favorite. And it always, oh boy, it always made. Oh god, okay. that's great. It's like nobody wants to see a man just completely. You know what it is? I can watch a guy cry if something terrible has happened. Just don't try to talk while you're crying. No, that's the thing. The talking and then bursting yeah. out into crying. Just let your shoulders go. Yeah. As you're fucking crying. But don't, for, for the love of God. A man needs don't to cry. In, a man needs to cry in private. Yeah, you do yeah. that in the shower. You, you do it in the shower, like when my son was born. Everyone's like, "Did you cry yet?" And I'm like, "No." What are you talking about? And then when my son was born, it all hit me later. And I went home to go get stuff for my wife in the hospital. And I sat on the couch and I didn't like weep, but I just got. I, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't weep, but I got emotional. But like, I'm just picturing you sitting on the couch by yourself and just you just go. <laughs> that stupid face. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's just completely unacceptable. To use your thing from your podcast. Uh, it's unacceptable. The Bursey effect. It's Un- unacceptable, dude. Un- completely no, unacceptable. No, you're right, though. The talk into it, right? <laughs> yeah. The, the talk into it. That's that's what the funny oh, yeah. thing about crying is, you know? Yeah. It's like, you know, you always do this to me. You know, you always do this to me, and I'm trying my best, and then it's just, it's over. Yeah. It's fucking over. Whenever my friends die, I've had so many who fucking died, I just cry in the shower. Yeah. That's what I do. I asked a girl. We asked a girl, right? Because you don't well, feel like you're crying because there's all that water on your face anyway. <laughs> <laughs> no, we asked a girl. We go, what would you do if your dude started crying? Like if it wasn't – if nobody died, if a dude and you were just arguing. He just had a bad day. And he just had a bad day and you got into it and he broke down and cried. And she goes, yeah, no, over. 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 Okay. Get the fuck away from me. Yeah. You know what's funny? There's some women, they think that they want to see that part of you. They don't. What that is to them is that's their total conquest. Yeah. Like, you know, when you bang a girl in the ass and you're just like, yeah, I got this shit. I'm fucking with you. No, yeah. oh. <laughs> their version of that. I was just that, like, Jesus, Bill. No, I'm fucking with you. They, their version of that is is if they can get you to be so vulnerable around them that you cry. And then it's one of those things. It's almost like when the crowd screams out a joke they already heard. They think they want to hear it again. And then you tell. It's like, ah, uh, yeah, that yeah. wasn't as good. No. It's the same thing as that. Yeah, and you said something. You said something about like if a burglar comes in, if you cry in front of a woman, all in her mind is like, what if the burglar comes in on this fucking guy? Yeah, no, it's over. You can't cry. You strip a woman of security if you cry in front of her, I think. I don't think I've cried. In fr- I think my wife's so Yeah, that's a gr- that's what it is. Yeah, like, you strip her of her security because now oh, she's yeah. like, well, I got this fucking. Yeah, this during fucking, crisis. I got this baby sleeping next to me yeah. every night. You know, yeah, it's, it's over. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh, yeah, no, you just, you might as well just have a pullover sweater on, you know? <laughs> walking around <laughs> and then she mocks you what are you gonna cry bitch <laughs> oh, oh. you're so mean <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's fucking over dude you can't have that uh so sad music uh cats in the cradle with classic one uh no i actually listen to a lot of i be, believe it or not like i mean I, you always have like your core shit that you listen I like to phil, i like some phil collins when it's sad what does oh, he have? Oh, I wish it would rain down. Down, down me. me. Oh, yeah. Well, I hated that annoying one when he was sitting there, like, ruining my day by bringing up homeless people. Like, I don't look at them and feel bad for them. Yeah, uh, no, it's which another one was it? day for you and me. Hey, oh, think twice. Cause it's just, just another day for you and me, you and me in paradise. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah. That fucking stupid song. Yeah, no, I hate when people do. Unless all the money to that went to homeless people, that's one. Of, that's just pandering to the. Have crowd. you ever cried? Have you ever cried alone listening to a song, or like not cried, but have you ever been like? Oh no, I've completely broken down, and I've totaled three cars, just weeping uncontrollably. <laughs> <laughs> no, have I? Yeah. Have I like, so we... totally cried? No, no. I've definitely teared up. Listen, as yeah. an as an artist, at some point, you, you're going to have to go to those emotions. You need you need to be uh, you need to be in tune with your instrument. No, I have. I've, I what was the ones like? I had this weird thing where um, I stopped crying at some point. I don't know when. I stopped crying and got mad more when when I got hurt and my brother beat the shit out of me. Um, you know, the, the, most of the crying I'd be is just like fuck you at the end of it but oh, i wasn't yeah. but i wasn't crying and then i, <laughs> I didn't cry <laughs> i remember one time dude i remember one time my my, my brother's bigger than me my yeah. little brother's bigger than me right big though like and i remember he i said i said if you fucking take my clothes again 
If you take my clothes, he did it every day. Right. He would go into my room. He would take my belt. He would take my clothes, and I'd come home. And you I guys need in to a go, boy band? And I, I need to go. I need to go out. Right. And I go, mom. If he does it again, I'm fucking hitting him. And my mom would be like, oh, you know, he did. And he, and one time I need really needed a shirt, and I'm fucking st- throwing shit through the house. And he gets out of his friend's car and he starts walking up, and he's got it on. And I fucking snapped. And my oh, grandmother yeah. was there, and I jumped on him and I started punching him. And he stood up and he just goes. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you made your older brother cry? No, no, my younger brother. Oh. He was bigger than me. But he didn't know what to do. He got so upset that he just – and he looked around. And he just – he was so angry that something needed to come out and he just goes, <laughs> fuck you, dude. <laughs> what, did you feel bad? Did you start no, laughing? No, I, I kind of just walked away and you know we laughed about it afterwards. But uh, now, now he's a, he's a fuck. He's a big kid. But you know, my mom had the opposite. Um, yeah, I got a little brother of mine. He's an animal, you know? No, my mom says she went to a she went to a funeral once, and everybody was there, and everybody was crying, and she was overwhelmed with emotion that they had to fucking drag her out. She said she had the mo- one of the most embarrassing things happen to her, where she said she uncontrollably laughed because they said that that could happen sometimes. So she's sitting there, <laughs> she's she's sitting there, and everybody's crying, and like she went up and she could not stop laughing, and like she and, and I said why like and she was like Paul, I just don't know. She goes, I could not stop laughing, and they had to walk me out. And like, and she just, this is she your said, mom? yeah, she said, because the emotions were so much that they said that that could happen sometimes where it just, it, you just like, she didn't know what to do. So instead of just breaking down, she went the other way and just couldn't, couldn't control herself. Yeah. No, like humans like will protect you in uh, a really like, that's what they don't get. Sometimes when comics make fucking horrific jokes about some bad event, make good jokes. Yeah. But it's about a horrific event. So they go, that's so fucking me. It's a defense mechanism. It's no, also, she, she, my, she mom is a, my mom is a sweetheart who felt bad and her emotions just went the other way. And she goes, Paul, I felt so bad. I, I couldn't control myself. She said, oh, I couldn't God. control myself. I hate to say this because somebody lost somebody. But there was, if there was video of that, <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> oh, so I was saying, so I, somewhere around, I don't know, 10 or 11, I didn't cry for years, years and years and years. And I didn't, I didn't cry until a friend of mine killed himself. And even then... I was sad, and it just—I uh, went. Uh, I was in the bathroom once again, yeah. And it was in there, and I remember I started to cry, and then I started thinking like, "Wow, I'm crying. I haven't cried in a long time." And then I stopped because I you was just, out of it because I stopped thinking about the dude killing himself. Wow, yeah. I went ten years without a cry, and then I had one. What was it over? Yogurt. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't have gummy bears. <laughs> No, uh, I think yeah, it might have been when my it might have been when my son was born. You know, it might have been when my son. That's was that's born. acceptable. I guess it's acceptable. Back in the day, you just stood out in the waiting room, right, smoked a cigar. No, you Irish dudes don't. Cr- I, I said today. I, I even just tweeted something. Irish dudes. I swear to God, I've never seen a funnier group of people who a take pain and just take a beating. Some of the funniest people to talk it's to. The acceptance. It's the ex- it's, 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 it's the acceptance. <laughs> Of the beating, and you don't try to change it, and you just they, like you just keep running into the brick wall. There's something so comical about just accepting the beating, not trying yeah. to remedy it at all. I don't, I don't have that 100 percent anymore because of getting into this business and traveling and yeah, seeing other types of ways of dealing with shit. But like, dude, I was actually thinking the other day, like my bloodline, German, Irish, Scottish, English, right there. I mean, that would make a therapist do a spit take. Like, you're fucked emotionally when you yeah. have that blood running through you i don't know what it is and then uh no then, i see you when we get hung over and we had a night out the night before and then i see you in the lobby and you just see the look on my face and i'm miserable and i'm looking at him and i'm going this guy did what i did how is he just taking it like you don't even show you just fucking put your head down and go me i put that's I, how i got sick yeah because we we were out we were found that uh that cigar private place we smoked the cigars in calgary we drank. We got like three hours sleep, and then we woke up, came here. Yeah. Took a fucking steam, and then I came back and like an asshole. I'm, like, I'm gonna go work out. Oh, fucking three you're hours an sleep, and then I fucking jumped on the treadmill and then worked out, and I came back, and then right when I got to the theater, and, and in my head I was going like, like, this is dumb, Bill. Yeah. Don't go down to the treadmill because you just got all hot in the steam thing, and then you're gonna run down there sweating. And you only got you three go, hours. You go, Verzi, what'd you do? I go, I took a nap. I laid down. It was great. I go, what'd you do? You, you, I go, did you get some sleep? He goes, no, nah, no, nah, I went to the gym. I'm like, it's a fucking animal. <laughs> <laughs> Give yourself a break. Yeah, I, 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 I go until I get sick, and then I give myself a break. Whatever, Paul. Hey, what do you want from me? Okay, I am who I am. Right. Yeah, I got a friend. He doesn't quit, you know? <laughs> Maybe sometimes I want to. I'm just afraid. <laughs>
You're sabotaging yourself. <laughs> <laughs> it's obnoxious at this point, people, and I don't care. Fuck you. You do 20 days in a row. <laughs> All right. Problem with ex-girlfriend. Um, Bill, uh, I have a question regarding how to handle a situation with my ex-girlfriend. I used to really hug, kiss, and squeeze her all the time. After we broke up, I talked to a pretty 20-year-old in a coffee shop about squeezing and making out in the blue water in Thailand. She really got into it and asked me to show her how I would pleasure her in the ladies' room. Dude, this guy's got some game. He's sitting there painting a picture to the what? point. There you go. He goes, I have always been a romantic, so I said yes. That's hilarious. I'm a romantic. I'll take you to the ladies' room. <laughs> oh, my God. That's he a goes, fucking movie. I kind of got into eating around. I, I don't get this graphic. He what? goes, I added some dirty talk, and I think somebody might have listened in. I saw my ex-girlfriend leave the copy. Sh Wait, she was in there later, but she did not say hello. Wait a minute. I, I got with the graphicness of this. Wait, wait, wait. I talked to her in a coffee shop. She was really into it. So wait, 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 wait. So I saw my ex-girlfriend leave the coffee shop. So she was there as you did all of this, but she didn't say hello. I met up with this girl a couple times, and she always wanted to ple me to pleasure her in public places like the movies, etc. She got a fetish here. Then she suddenly proposed that I would pleasure her friend who I had met a couple of times. Dude, fuck you. What? This is awesome. Dude, you don't have to achieve shit after hey, this. Where's that coffee shop, all right? <laughs> I know from experience that this would be a red flag, but I said yes because I am 42. Oh, now he's a creep. 42. What are you doing? He's still out there. And I really The longer this question goes, the more it sounds like a lie. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? And I really love to pleasure women. After having pleasured this woman in a changing room in a department store, I again saw my ex-girlfriend leaving without saying hello. Where? Dude, this is fucking bullshit. You keep pleasuring this woman and your and girlfriend your keeps showing up. And up. I don't buy it. Uh, but I got to read it. This is such a great story. I'm going to finish it though. Um, later, my ex-girlfriend called me and was a bit upset. She asked me, am I not a woman you would have sex in a public place with? Now the correct grammar would be a woman with whom you would have sex in a public place. Do you think I should correct her grammar? Oh, this is all a bullshit one. Or would you think that correcting her is a sign of not being over her? I, I don't buy that, man. That's just too fucking crazy. I mean, that was, that's like, I've never heard of anything. I yeah, mean, no, no, no. And he's 42. That was very well-written, phony question. And I liked all the fucking left turns. It was wonderful. I enjoyed it. There's no way that could be real, right? No. Not, not. I mean, you're sitting in a fucking coffee shop when your ex-girlfriend's sitting there not saying hi. And another yeah, girl. She, and she doesn't work at the coffee shop. And another girl's like, hey, man, why don't you come in the bathroom and eat me out? I mean, that's like. Listen, that alone, that could happen. But to then have it happen again at, at <laughs> Thailand, you know what I mean? <laughs> Not I, heard I mean, in, in, the, in the department store. I heard a lucky. Play the lotto, buddy. Jesus. Um, all right. Well, this is the last one, and then we got we to run here. Um, am I a whore? Uh, hey there, Billy Fatface. Fuck you. I've been on the treadmill. Uh, I am a senior in high school and might be a whore. I know you're the lean, mean, red-headed machine when it comes to calling out whores, so I'll let you be the judge. I, I hey, Listen, I, I don't fucking judge you here. All right, my ex-boyfriend, who was a year older than me, left for college at the end of last year. He goes to University of Washington, a decent leap from Arizona, um, where we went to high school. We broke up after j dating just over a year because we ultimately agreed that a long-distance relationship would suck for both of us. Plus, I eventually knew I'd be plagued with the thought of him balls deep in some artsy whore, and it would get to me. This girl's hilarious. Um, however, when we visited this uh, for his winter break about six months later, I came on to him again. He initially didn't want to get back together because he knew he was leaving and thought I'd be, uh, I'd be hurt in the long run, but quickly gave in. We were basically dating again for the entire three-week break he was here, holding hands in public and going on dates where one of us would pay or the other. Um, what do we got here? Finally, we left without any incident, but it felt like we kind of flashed back to our heavily involved relationship. Here's where things start to get sleazy on my part. His friend, Devin, uh-oh. Oh, boy. Was always around. Oh, boy. Oh, yeah. Opie. Oh, boy. His friend, Devin, was always around when we were dating, trying to insert himself into things when my ex and I would hang out. My ex thought it was creepy and shut him down, but ever since he left, I've been hanging out with Devin a lot. Oh, uh -oh. how could you do this? All the dicks in the world, you're going to jump on this one. Um, which wouldn't make you a whore. It just kind of makes you like, uh, you could have had a better selection here. Here we go. 
I spent Valentine's Day with them. And then she writes, oh, geez, uh, but nothing happened. And I sent my ex a picture to see what his reaction would yeah, be. See, that's what she's doing. It upset him, and he told me that it really pissed him off and was comparable to cheating. Later this month, I went to a formal event with him and posed, posted a picture on Twitter. I texted my ex later that week, and he told me it was really pissing him off how I dragged him back into having feelings for me and then rubbed my proverbial dick in his face. I apologize, but ever since then, he seemed kind of pissed at me and, interest, and not interested in talking to me. What do you think there, Billy Boy? Am I a dirty whore? And, is his just anger justified, or is he just being a jealous cunt? Love the podcast. Thanks, and go fuck yourself. Um, you're not a whore. You're not a dirty whore. Uh, what you are is you're being a really mean person yeah. because you don't know how to express the fact that you still have feelings for him. So you dragged him back into it, and maybe um, you didn't want to break up with him. but you, Or maybe you thought you did, and now you're having second thoughts about it, and rather than just saying that to him, uh, the pain you have that you're not together, you're now sort of for some reason taking it out on him by doing everything that you know is going to tear his heart out of his chest. So you need to stop doing that. That's what I would say. Yeah, that's exactly like it's like just nobody – how come nobody just picks up the phone and says, hey, like keep sending the poor guy pictures and fucking doing that to him? There's no Well, reason. look, they're young. They're young. You don't, know, you don't know how to do stuff like that. And sometimes you're doing shit and you don't know why you're doing shit because you don't know who you are yet. So I'm not judging this person. I'm just saying what you're doing is really – it's really unnecessarily mean. But one thing that's not brought up, what about Devin's feelings? I know. He must really seem to care for her. <laughs> no, but like there's two guys getting fucked. She's sending pictures. I don't know. Just – I mean, Listen, yeah, I without a down. doubt, Devin – Devin's not a good dude. Because it's his friend. It's his friend. Yeah. It's his he, friend. And he was trying to move in on it when uh, when, uh, when they were still together. So that guy, you know, it's weird. You know who's going to lose in all of this is going to be you. Because you're, you're with this creep. This guy's a fucking creep. Um, or maybe he's just well, you don't know. They're all young. You don't Who know knows? he's a creep, though. Yeah, maybe, maybe he always had feelings for her and the other guy didn't treat We don't know. I just went with creep because she said that her ex-boyfriend said it was creepy. I don't fucking know, Paul. What am I going to solve the Solve the problems of fucking 18 and 19 year olds. I can't do this. All right. Look. Yeah. Stop doing that to him. Stop posting. I mean, come on. Stop sending pictures. And you're you're acting like you don't know what you're doing, at least as far as like uh, hurting the person. You're hurting hurting them and you should stop. Um, And if you don't, then you're a mean person. But you're not a whore. She's not a whore. No, that's not a whore. That's not a whore. What is a whore to you, Paul? If she sent pictures while she was blowing Devin, I mean, that'd be a little fucking much. You know, but even then, as you get older, when you start to think of the psycho- psychological reasons as to why a woman would do that, you know, and it always goes back to some sort of family issue that they would do that, some sort of insecurity, and you know, having no boundaries. A lot right, of but times, a- when something like that happens, you got touched as a kid. I'm kind of paraphrasing some of the shit that I've heard. Some no, I just think a whore. When I about. think a whore, I think of you using sex. You, you know, doing sexual things or using sex in order to, to gain and do stuff like that, you know, to, to get yourself ahead through, through sex. Right. And, she's, and I would actually say that that's more of a sociopath who just happens to be using, uh, you know, sex rather than using a gun or a knife or something like that. They're just going up. They're using the weapon that they got. Are and, all whores sociopaths? No. No, 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 no. I would say, I would say, no, not at all. I would say that, you know. Men and women who have a bunch of fucking partner, different partners or something like that, the older I get, they're not like dogs and whores and stuff like that. Like they have – there's something wrong with them uh, beyond um, – look, there's something wrong with fucking being married and this is the only person you're ever going to have sex with again. I mean that's just – there's something not fucking natural about that. But the other side of that is to just walk around – Fucking everybody. Just fucking everybody. Then there's something there's something wrong about that. But what I'm doing is also you know, my opinion is is I'm come I'm looking out my own head here, how I would feel. I remember, you know, I was out dogging around. I would always feel like a piece of shit on some level. Past a certain age. In your twenties you're like psyched, like, yeah, I got another one, right? In your thirties it starts to get yeah. it starts to get sad, it starts to get pathetic. So I, I wouldn't say you're a whore, but um unfortunately we have to wrap up here. Paul, another effortless podcast. Great time. Yeah. Always, always a great time. The Verzi Effect podcast. Yes, the Verzi Effect podcast. And also, um, we kick off March 31st at Largo. The All In Tour. The yes. All In Tour with myself, Joe Bartnick, Jason Lawhead. Um, These Bill- three animals are going on tour, and uh, I'm going to host 
the kickoff one. It's not. I don't know. Yeah, that one's yeah, that one's going to be at Largo. Yeah. I don't know where the other ones are. Dates are coming in. Dates are coming. Yeah, West Coast dates. Yeah, East Coast uh, dates. San Francisco Punchline is on the website now, so you could go to that. We're going to Portland. We're going to Seattle. We're going to San Diego. East Coast will be in Jersey. Uh, we will be in uh, Cleveland. Cleveland yep. So Pittsburgh. check out. Yeah, we're going to be in Pittsburgh. So check out all those dates are coming in. But that's the all in tour with. Uh, Oh, sponsored by the Monday Morning, morning Podcast. Morning, morning, it's with, the first tour that I'm putting uh, putting the Monday Morning Podcast name behind. And we appreciate it. <laughs> well, you know, I just love your talents. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, so, and then you could uh, go uh, to my Twitter, at Paul Verzi. That's V-I-R-Z-I. And please uh, download the Verzi Effect podcast. Bill was the last guest on it.